Welcome back, friends, to another episode of the Zephcast, the show where we get to know your favorite content creators, streamers, and podcasters alike. I am your host, Zephyrs XP, and with me today, we got YouTuber, streamer, and my awesome friend, Doro44, on the show. Thank you so much for being here today, Doro. How's your day going, dude? Of course. Thank you for having me. Um, it's going well. I'm just having a day off today, but I've just been relaxing and chilling and uh, glad to be here nice nice thank you seriously so much for taking time out of your busy day to come hang out here chat a little bit get to know a little bit more about you of course thank you for having me when you when you messaged me i was like oh, really yes i want to be on your podcast <laughs> Dude, th i'm i'm i've been so excited to talk to you like I, of course i'm really excited to talk to everybody but like you're the first person i've had on my show who does a lot of like original youtube content um so i'm just like super excited to jump into it talk about that kind of thing um oh, yeah. and just i'm really excited to see where our conversation takes us today me too so right before we jump into the real questions it is customary on the podcast to start with an icebreaker question so are you ready for the icebreaker question doro I'm ready. All right. If aliens beamed down to Earth and asked you to leave everything behind and come with them back to their home world, would you go? Why or why not? If my girlfriend has no say in it, yes, I would. Um, I know if I asked her, she'd be like, oh, you know what? Honestly, she probably would go with us as well. But yeah, I would. I would love that. That's like a that would never happen. Like it'd be like a once in a lifetime thing and it'd be like, "You know what? What if it's a better life?" I mean, I could get dissected, I don't know, but like <laughs> what if what if they bring me back as like an emperor and Ooh. I'm an emperor of an alien race? You don't know. Dude, that'd be pretty exciting. When I when right? I like generated that one before the show, I was like, that could be such a deep conversation because it there's really can. so many like what ifs that could happen. You know, like, yeah, what if you are enslaved right away or they do experiments <laughs> on you or what if you're hailed as like an emperor or, you know, but exactly. also the feeling of like leaving everything behind family, friends to go like into yeah. this unknown. It's it's really scary, but it's almost that moment of like, you know, if you don't do it, you'd regret it for the rest of your life, right? I would regret. See, I try to live my life without many regrets. And I know if I were to not go, I would regret it to the day I die. Right. I know I would regret it. So I, I would do it for 100%. I think it'd be so cool. I believe in aliens. So like, that'd be sick. I think mathematically, like it kind of makes sense. It feels like more and more people are kind of coming on that. Like aliens could be real kind of side of things. Um, yeah. Cause like, if you said that, you know, a hundred years ago, people would think you're crazy, but nowadays it's like, there's so many stars and just even our Milky way galaxy, like mathematically, even if it's super ultra rare, it could be. I mean, I just kind of think that like we I, I feel like we cannot be the literal only planet and like human species in the galaxy. We can't. And if we are, that's actually even more amazing than if there were aliens. It's so there has to be something. It's almost like if there are no aliens, it's kind of scary if we really are the first and only. But if there are aliens, it's oh like, God, yeah. where are they at? Why haven't they visited? There's so many like what ifs I could jump into that, right? yeah that's a whole that's actually a whole podcast for you right there <laughs> just talking about aliens and there's like if they exist or not i mean i maybe they're among us right now we don't know maybe among us. i mean that's what comic-con <laughs> could be right <laughs> <laughs> all the lizard people at Comic -Con, yeah right right <laughs> so first real question of the podcast so um i really really always love to start the podcast kind of talking a little bit about who you are as a streamer kind of even the person behind the streamer so who is doro 44 the streamer the youtuber and even the person behind it who are you my friend wow I, that's actually a super deep question a deep that one. i haven't i haven't even asked myself <laughs> that <laughs> um i just kind of take it day by day but honestly i just want to make people happy if i if i put it in simple terms i want to make people laugh and i want to make people happy um without getting too too deep into it you know growing up i got bullied a lot and i didn't have many friends and i kind of grew up in a household where like it was like emotionally not the best so i don't want other people to kind of go through those same things and i know how it is and so twitch and live streaming and engaging with my audience kind of gives me it puts me in a in a place where 
even if it's like one person if i can make someone smile or laugh behind the camera then like i made someone's day maybe and like that person's life is a little bit better now and that's really my goal and with my youtube it's pretty much just helping people like i when i before i even started like the youtube channel i was like contemplating on what content can i do all this and i was like i want to help people why don't i just do streaming tips and then i had the thought to myself you know who would want to listen to me if i'm not like a partner and all this stuff but i was like i'm a huge fan of gary v so one of the things Ooh, he yeah. said was um document yourself just document yourself and there's your content and so i was like okay well that can be a form of me doc documenting my experience as i learn things i can pass that knowledge on to other people so that they don't have to figure it out themselves and so that's the inspiration behind my content and just my streams in general dude i love gary v gary v is like I, yeah. super motivational he is i listen to him pretty much every day honestly i'm a huge self-help like nerd so yeah he's a big inspiration of mine so i don't know i'm sure i've mentioned a couple times to you before but i'm actually like a huge 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 fan of your youtube stuff and have literally binge watched like every single youtube video you've done um <laughs> one thing i actually do remember from it when you're kind of talking about this idea of what kind of community do you want to build for yourself on twitch and something that kind of yeah. stuck out to me was this idea of like people who are lonely and having a place to come meet other people and friends and like form this community from and that like really really resonated with me a lot and you know I think when you have some of that self-help behind you and to help kind of lead people to you know some of that idea of like helping themselves it really mm -hmm. really shows when you can have an effect on somebody's life exactly and it's you know twitch is content creation in general is just such a powerful thing people don't even realize because people just think of twitch as like oh you people watch you play video games and that can be it but there is so much potential with just content creation in general and what you can do for people um gary v is a content creator you know or you can call him a motivational speaker whatever but he's a content creator and that power that you have with the internet you can change people's lives Dude, 10 million percent. Um, I totally agree with that. I, I usually get my daily dose of Gary Vee on like Instagram. He'll do these yeah. like 45 second or minute videos. And it's just always like, it's like morning cup of coffee. You know, you just kind of need it to kickstart the day a little bit. Exactly. And you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer too, that like, depending on how you start your day, that's like the theme of your day. You know, if you yes. wake up angry and angry at the world, your day is going to be filled with anger and hate versus and I'm, I, that's a whole conversation of like my belief system and everything, but I'm a very, I'm a huge advocate for like positive thinking and like, like attracts like. So like if, if you try to live a positive, happy life, more of those things are attracted to you. If you live a hateful life, then you're surrounded by more hate. So waking up to Gary Vee and all that kind of stuff kind of like starts you in the right direction, you know? Kind of like, I remember, again, one of your videos I was watching um, just a couple days ago, you were talking about how, like, if somebody pops into somebody's Twitch channel and they're just filled with negativity and talking crap about yeah. why aren't people watching me versus others or like, this game sucks, this game sucks, and just like all this negativity, would you as a viewer want to stay in that stream? Not necessarily. Like, a lot of times, yeah. and, and it's, it, I'm not, at all advocating for like fake positivity or like if you're having a right. terrible day like putting on that face of positivity like it's really right. important to be honest with your emotions but that was another thing i was like doro hit it right on the head with that 10 million percent as gary v says it's all perspective right it is glass half full right yeah and then just like looking at things through other people's eyes kind of just gives you more like self-awareness because yes. we tend to like forget things, you know, and like I said in that video, um, exactly like how you quoted it is actually how I said it. it was just like, you know, if you're negative as a streamer in your own streams, but you're complaining that nobody's watching you, it's probably because you're negative. And it's like, think of it from the viewer's standpoint. If you were watching someone and the person was all negative, like, would you want to hang out there? Probably not. So then take that information and apply it. I don't know. It's... It's like those friends in your life that are just like they are always kind of bringing you down or like constantly yeah. complaining and it's like it's one thing i feel like it's the whole 
cry wolf mentality like if you're just always 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 complaining people start to become kind of numb to it and you know your complaints kind of roll off the yeah. shoulder essentially but if you yeah. are like you know you complain when something is worth complaining about and like actually negative that's when you know people kind of keep their ears up a little bit more to it you know exactly and honestly you ever like look back at things that you got upset at in the moment and then you kind of look back and you're just like that wasn't a big deal right you know most problems that we have are not a big deal but like we get so swept up in our emotions with it that at the in the moment we're just like it's the end of the world oh no yeah. and it's just all horrible and it's not if there's anything i've learned as i've gotten older is humans can be very emotional creatures <laughs> and yes. you know sometimes trying to be a take that step back and be a little bit more methodical in life it can go mm -hmm. a long way for sure exactly aside from gary v like do you have any other kind of um because one person specifically that popped on my radar that we were both following is matt Devella, and i love his youtube content. love his stuff he is incredible he's an incredible cinematographer movie maker yes. documentary maker um are yes there, are there any other i aspire to be that man i <laughs> I love his cinematography and his filmmaking and I like the information he gives too. Like I I he I don't know, he has very bingeable yes. YouTube content. Like his titles just hook you and you, I I'm opening up tabs upon tabs. I'm just like I want to watch all these videos cuz he I don't know and the way he per, he the way he gives out the information just keeps you hooked. He is like to me he's a top youtuber like i wish i could have content as good as that or even a fraction of that like he's just amazing and i love his content um but other than like that um tony robbins i loved him growing up and even to this day he's still super motivational to me um i read a lot of books to be honest with you i don't really listen to like a lot of um like public speakers or anything like that um so yeah, I'm more into the books. So like a couple of books that I really like are um, How to Win Friends and Influence People. That's a really good book. Um, Think and Grow Rich is a really good book by Napoleon Hill. Um, books like that. I, I really like books that have information. I, I'm a firm believer that we don't really realize how powerful our mind is and like how life can really change for you when you know you start changing the way you think and the way you act and all of that so i, I really I'm, I'm into stuff like that you know it's really fascinating i was listening to i think it was a joe rogan rogan podcast a couple of weeks ago and he had a get mm -hmm. he had a doctor on who was talking about how if you are just constantly negative in your mind and just always thinking negative th thoughts it can actually cause your immune system to get weaker which in turn can cause you to get sicker. And yeah. um, it's just fascinating how the mind can literally just dictate so much. Um, mm -hmm. And just having that positive mentality can can truly be life changing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, most of those books I've I haven't read. I think I read the or not read. I listened to like the audio like Audible podcast of yeah. uh, oh, I think it was the Think and Grow Rich one years it's back. One. And then I have a couple other ones like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, of course, is, is incredible. Love that book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I have that book. All the books I talk about are right back there, actually. I love that book. No, I, yeah, that I, book really changed my my perspective on a, a bunch of things. Have you ever read? I actually see it. I, what is it up here? The Richest Man in Babylon. I have that book back there, too. I love that book. That book is the one that taught me how to save my money and investment and like working for myself and yeah other than the um the robert kawasaki book um richard at poor dad the richest man in babylon great book loved it audie has a copy of that book because i bought one for her because i was like i read it and i was like you need to read this book it's just so good you know what's so funny about like self-help stuff like that i've realized is mm. if you just because I, I found this out with my coworker, um i gifted him for christmas one time rich dad poor dad and was like mm. a lot of the things you know i've been kind of changing the past year really stemmed from reading this book and kind of like it was almost the cascade effect of everything kind of I really became interested in self-help and, and, you know, financial yeah. independence and stuff like that afterwards, but he never read it, you know, like two years later, I remember asking him about, it. he's like, I still haven't like opened it or anything. And it's like so fascinating how something that can be like a catalyst for you, if you mm. gift it to somebody, 
they have to be like in the right mindset to accept it you know they can't just like yeah. flick the switch and be like ready to change their life you know no matter what gift you give them or like what you tell them there has to be a moment in your life where you just have that reckoning and you're like i want things to be better i want things to change that happened to me a few years back with like money i was like sick and tired of living paycheck to paycheck and i'm like yeah I something has to change. We're going to binge read books and YouTube and stuff. And, you know, when that happens, it, it's like a monumental crossroads in life. Honestly, it really is. And like talking about gifting the book, um, I I believe that just, you know, if you're if people aren't. If people aren't ready for it at that moment, then they're not ready for it. You know, right. um, you know, it's like a video game. Like for me, sometimes I buy a video game and I don't play it or I can't get into it. But then years later, I get into it and I love it. Um, it's the same thing with just things in life. You know, you, you that book is a very powerful book, but your friend hasn't read it yet. It means they're probably not ready for that book yet. Right. Um, and, you know, one day like life will just take them hopefully to read the book or something else um but i'm a strong believer like, i don't believe in destiny in, in, a, in a sense but i believe in like you know the right things come in the right time um especially with stuff like that so speaking of things that come in at the right time i do have to ask the question how did the infamous or famous in this example hello there meme pop up in your life in your channel <laughs> i gotta know so I've always been like a fan of Star Wars um, and Obi-Wan was always like my favorite. But when I first started streaming, I realized I was just saying hi to everybody or like, hello there. Like, hey, what's up? And I was like, you know what? I should just like have like Obi-Wan Kenobi, just that that voice line play. So it used to just be a voice line. Um, and that was just like it was an easier way for me to like say hi to people but then also kind of add that extra oomph to it with the voice line people people just loved it and i was like okay cool and then funny enough um crastabule he photoshopped my face onto <laughs> obi-wan kind of just like leaning yes and i was like this is the best thing ever and i was like can i use that as like a gif that pops up and he goes yeah of course and then that's when i combined the gif that he made with the voice line and then that's it and then now people it's one of those things that like now people correlate me with the hello there and every time they see me somewhere it's like oh hello there and i'm just like oh hey yeah hello there hello there and yes. just um yeah i don't know that's just how it happened it wasn't meant to be like be anything but people loved it shout out to crasty by the way of course yes shout out to crasty you dude like that he's made some really funny content um, with like my stuff and i'm just like dude you're a genius but honestly it's like that's the kind of stuff that really resonates with people with with when they think of your brand or like who you are or like connect something to you it's those very original kind of things that connect like that that's where yeah. you know every time i'm on twitter if i see the hello there gif always 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 i think of you even if it's for like a microsecond i'm like ha, doro scroll scroll i love see and I, you know it's funny i don't even realize that people really do that i just kind of like claim that as my thing like you know what i love obi-wan i love star wars this is my thing i don't care and it, like when other people are like oh i use that for mine too i'm like oh that's awesome my thing still <laughs> speaking of but yeah. speaking of star wars um one of my favorite stories when it comes to like talking to people kind of about their streaming journey is hearing how mm -hmm. old friends reconnect with each other through twitch yeah. so how what's the story behind meeting pigs again through streaming if you don't mind me yeah asking. of course so mike and i went to high school together, the same high school, all four years. Um, and we were, I guess we were friends. He gets mad if I say acquaintances, but like, uh, we were friends. We would eat lunch together sometimes. And I remember specifically he, I got an Xbox 360 and he like brought like a hundred games, no like no cases or anything, just a hundred discs. He's like, here, play these. And I was like, okay. And so we were like friends. Um, but then after high school, we were friends on Facebook. But then after that, we just didn't talk. Years later, fast forward to 2020 when I started. Yeah, it's 2021 now. Um, and he, I was already streaming for a couple of months. And at that point, I was, I think I was averaging about 10 people. And he messages me out of the blue um, on Instagram. He's like, hey, man, I see that you've been streaming. I've been lurking in your streams a little bit and um i wanted to start streaming 
uh, do you have any like you know advice or tips or like how i can get started and so i was like yeah so i uh, we talked a little bit and then he started and then that's just how it happened and then like you know mike is mike now um but like we realized one day that he literally lives two minutes from my house no for, way i swear <laughs> to god for two minutes from my house and it's been that way for a while we just never knew um so yeah and then so we hung out we started reconnecting and the rest is history you know and that's really cool that's really really cool like it, it just the way how because there's been one person i've met um ice beams i met him mm -hmm. from twitch like met him in real person and there was just this moment of like holy crap you're like a real person like yeah. from the internet you're a real person and of <laughs> yeah. course i'm sure it's different with mike because he like knew him in high school and everything but like i'm so excited for twitchcon and, and you know being able to meet hopefully you someday and just yeah. everybody and like actually see that face to face like have that connection of like internet turning into like irl friendships that's so cool that that can happen it's, on twitch that's actually really like i can relate because i just met like a month ago dan, uh, right? dreamer dan yeah, yeah. And it was crazy. It was like, whoa, I know you from the internet and your streams and voice calls. And now you're in person in front of me. I'm hugging you right now. This is so weird. I so, saw yeah, that. I, totally get it. I think it was on Instagram. I saw that photo with like you and pigs yeah. and, and Audie. And uh, yeah, that was really, really cool. It's just, it's this reality that, you know, people behind the camera, you know, in this computer monitor are real friends. It always frustrates me when you yeah. hear some people say like internet friends aren't real friends i'm like friends are friends regardless where they're yeah. from you know i have some really close friend like okay i have some really close friends that i played rainbow six siege with for six years and a few of them still pop in my stream one pops in almost every day and we still talk and like i've always wanted to meet them in person but i never have but like they have my phone number we text like they're legit friends even yes. as even though i've never met them in real life the the thing is the world is very different today than it, what it used to be i totally get that mentality maybe back in the 70s or the 80s or the 90s where it's just like what you don't even know this person pen pals but like yeah but that was that was my next point pen pals have been a thing for so long but to them it wasn't weird so this is kind of like the same thing but just more enhanced like we can jump on a video call like we are now and i can see you and your reactions so like i i bet people who say those types of things wish they had this kind of technology back then you right. know that's legit i mean gr granted there are a few people maybe on the internet that you don't know that maybe you should not know but like yeah. for the most part especially with twitch and content creation we're all here for the same thing and the same mentality and it's like you can meet some really cool people and like lifelong friends a thousand percent and it's almost like i've always felt like with twitch if you're going at like the video game aspect of it it really feels like when somebody's playing a game um yeah. it's almost like the person who wants to go on twitch to watch somebody play that game the game is like that middle ground that connects the viewer to the streamer and creates that friendship it's like that middle ground of like how you met somebody and yeah. you know I, I i'm a big believer that i don't think twitch is like just for video games and i know you think that as well um but it's it's almost like a live streaming platform that has been used mostly for video games but it's kind right. of coming to the point where just chatting is taken over you know hot tub streams are a thing now i guess yeah i mean you can get in a hot tub now yeah. right but even like irl streams music streams like art streams yeah. there's like so many cool things that people you know get really creative on on twitch and it's 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 so mind-blowing the amount of creativity other people have oh yeah and i i I think that Twitch is just a place where you can engage with your fans and your audience and your friends. That's what it's meant for. And then, yes. you know, if you're creating content elsewhere for like offline, uh, you know, enjoyment, then yeah. But Twitch is the place where you can actually live engage with people and meet people. And like, like you said, the, the game is like the middle ground. People come for the game. They stay for the streamer. I always yes. say that. A thousand percent agree. You know, I always, yeah. I, I kind of feel like some of those like ludwig as an example huge 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 streamer on twitch yeah. he kind of has that hack where he makes his youtube videos live on stream it's almost like a, yeah. a, a double hack he has going on funny that you say that because i actually have a note in my phone um on his strategy um 
just written down as an idea for maybe like how I can kind of shift things for my content because it, what he does is very like true. Like he doesn't, if you don't do content that's like maybe educational or whatever, like his form of content is entertainment. Yes. And I, I watched his video on like what he's like, how he does it. And so, you know, you create high stakes, you create events, and then you cr make those events and those streams into edited videos and then it's just a cycle and it's just like dude that is so freaking smart big and brain a, big brain dude <laughs> like for real you know who who um the other one kind of reminds me of that is uh have you heard of stream schemes by any chance yeah i love stream scheme they're actually like i watch them on youtube a lot and like they motivate me to keep doing my content and stuff so yeah there is a lot of stuff that they've talked about as well um lj in particular talks a lot about like really focusing on creating content outside of twitch on the more discoverable platforms you know i've heard yeah. th i've heard that a million times from like harris heller <laughs> yeah, yeah. we've all heard that yeah you <laughs> i know. see it a lot on my youtube <laughs> <laughs> it's so true like aside from the recommended channel on twitch and that's it <laughs> that's kind of it yeah the... maybe maybe being high up in the directory but barely because the, the thing about the directory people are like oh well you if you're high up in the directory yeah but people are already watching the other people so you'll only possibly bring in people who click on the game but it's not a guarantee that they'll click on you right you know and re i don't know how the recommended tab works i don't know how twitch is recommending people streamers to certain people i don't know how that works from what i've gathered it, it just seems random but twitch just has no growth it's not like it used to be what do you think twitch could do to really I, i'm sure there's like so many things i could do to fix it but i've always thought like clips when they're made just kind of end up in this like graveyard where nobody really views them you know out I don't yeah. know it, it would be cool if there was i'm trying to think of like from the youtube platform perspective if there was like a separate something you could press on the side that showed like recommended clips you know recommended i don't know like any ideas you think that twitch could use to really kind of bolster their that algorithm side from them that youtube and tiktok seem to dominate i don't because i think twitch's mentality is we are a streaming platform and that is it and it's up to you, the creator, to bring in your traffic. Like we don't care otherwise. Um, and that's just a harsh reality of it. Where I Twitch doesn't owe us anything, to be honest with you. They give us the platform to stream on. I think where they failed though is they put all of their eggs in one basket, which a business should never do. Um, but they they doubled down and put all their eggs in one basket which was streaming that was it but youtube has videos youtube has streaming youtube now has youtube shorts which is a competitor for tiktok and you know they have youtube tv they, they have a bunch of stuff and they and they have an algorithm in play to help people grow because they know that if people grow on their platform people will likely stay on their platform to create more content so that they can run more ads, which then YouTube makes more money. And it's just a cycle. So if you if you please your creators in that sense, then everybody wins. And Twitch doesn't get that, I don't think. And Twitch is getting in with a lot of heat now with a bunch of different things. And I have a feeling that YouTube will dominate even Twitch streaming maybe probably in the next decade it'll be a normal thing to stream on youtube one thing um i know we both fo follow harris heller he's kind of like the yeah. stream doctor doctorate is, if you yeah. will um yeah. and he recently moved from twitch to youtube and i know yeah. one of the things he was saying i was watching one of his live streams on youtube which is the whole watching experience on youtube versus twitch like i know twitch yeah. has 10 million things they could do better but like it just feels so much better watching streaming on twitch in my opinion watching on oh, youtube yeah. is like a really weird experience um at least ui and design wise but one thing it was mentioning was moving from twitch to youtube with youtube you have you know like the youtube tv shorts you have all these different videos all these different things you yeah. um multiple eggs in a basket as as you mentioned but now you have to compete for eyeballs that didn't go to YouTube specifically for streaming. You almost have to compete with people who want to watch videos, who maybe want to watch shorts, 
and then possibly jump into a stream whereas when people go yeah. to twitch even though it is just one single egg just the streaming egg in the basket if you will they go there with the intent i want to watch a stream a live stream i don't want to watch right. videos i don't want to watch shorts or clips i want to watch a stream so it's like i don't know when you were saying that because like i've always believe that exact same thing but kind of when you were just talking about it a moment ago i was like you know but at the same time from a viewer perspective i wonder how many people if twitch did introduce videos or shorts or clips or something i wonder how many people like would jump on that you know i think it's all about branding because when you think nike you think shoes when you think fiji you think water and so and that's what they built their brands around so twitch has always been the streaming platform and youtube right. has always been the video platform but now i youtube's um ui for streaming is horrible like i yeah. love dr disrespect <laughs> and but i can't watch them because it's just like i i'm not enjoying this because the ui is just horrible yeah but i i think youtube's trying at least that's the thing twitch isn't yeah twitch is not trying instead they give us i don't know weird hype emotes that nobody asked for so you know at least youtube is trying which content creators do they they throw stuff at a wall until something sticks and that's what youtube is doing right now um while twitch is just kind of sitting there just like twiddling their thumbs not really doing anything unless they're they're keeping quiet on some huge update that we don't know about but like other than that I still feel like YouTube is kind of making strides um, and one day probably will be like the new norm. And even if like Twitch doesn't like, even if YouTube doesn't become the streaming platform, like it's more competition is always good for everybody. Cause even if YouTube oh, yeah. keeps pushing, maybe Twitch will kind of pull a couple things from the YouTube side. Um, right. I think it'd be cool to be able to stream in a higher bit rate. Like that's one thing. Yeah. I know that's a tactical thing and 99% of people might not care much about it. But like when you notice, when you see a difference between like, I've seen some 4k streams on, on YouTube, rarely, like it's really hard to be able to have the upload bandwidth and the PC power to be able to do that. But like, oh my goodness, it looks so sharp and crisp. And I'm like, maybe one day Twitch, maybe one day. <laughs> I always say, like, I always joke with my, uh, my viewers were like, if I ever hit partner, like the only reason why I would really want it is for guaranteed encoding. Yes. Because I stream, I stream at 720p, um, just so that more people can like watch it, but I could definitely do 1080p, 60 FPS, but like, I don't want to until I have guaranteed encoding. So I actually just got my PC, like week ago week and a half ago and i've always yeah. been streaming 72060 on my off of my macbook which yeah. it like struggled to death <laughs> so with all my elgato stuff it wasn't like optimized for the macbook side so i had to put mm -hmm. boot camp on my macbook um oh. and run like everything on the windows side of it but the problem oh. with that is a lot of the fans and like a lot of the way the fans uh like cool the cpu and stuff um yeah. apple doesn't release the drivers on boot camp side so literally the oh. moment like windows would boot up on it the fans would just be spinning crazy it, like oh i'd pull up like uh some hardware monitoring stuff and the cpu would be at like 95 100 degrees celsius like it was insane oh yeah i could I could like feel it like an arm's reach away. I'd be yeah. like, and and the problem with streaming off of a laptop is the battery on it. So there'd be some mm. streams where I'd just be like, well, I guess we got to end now and go raid out because I only have like 4% battery on my MacBook. So short yeah. stream today. <laughs> That's it's impressive because I never would have guessed that you were streaming off of a MacBook because I always thought your streams looked high quality and everything. So that's insane that I mean, I guess shout out to Apple and then like your ingenuity with that. Cause like, dude, it, it worked <laughs> even though in the background, it's like, please help me. <laughs> it totally was like my streams, whenever anything big would happen. Like if I did some scenes with, uh, you know, like a lot of alerts going off or any kind of yeah. MVP stuff when like I'd have raining gifts and stuff like that, it would just start dropping frames left and right. So it, it was, oh my God. it was a struggle. Um, but yeah, and, and so i was streaming 720p 60 i recently got the pc and bumped it up to 1080 60 and i okay, noticed nice. like my first week of streaming with it i didn't get any transcoding at all 
and mm -hmm. I would have some viewers mention like, I, I can't see your stream. It's not loading. Something's going on with it. Yeah. So that would be a big recommendation I'd make to anybody out there. Like a hundred percent. If you, I would definitely recommend doing 720p 60 FPS just yeah. right away. Um, I'm even thinking of possibly dropping mine back down as well because yeah, you don't get transcoding or anything like that unless you're a partner and, um, yeah, I mean, I've Clear. even seen some bigger affiliate streamers, you know, in that 50, 60, 70 range, and they still only have 1080, 60 and don't get any transcoding. So it's exactly. a struggle. And like, I've, I've been like lucky a lot where I get it a lot, but it's because I go live early in the day. And so maybe not as many partners are on, but I have some days where like, I have some viewers pop in they're just like hey you don't have encoding today and like is there any way you can like bump down your resolution i can't watch you and i'm like i can't i'm already live and right i'm sorry but like yeah I, I i think i honestly think that it i think encoding should be given to everybody to be honest with you that's not a, a huge incentive to become partner in my opinion um they should allow all people to be able to stream at whatever resolution they want with guaranteed encoding because it goes back to that will bring more people to watch more people it will make pe more people stream and then more people will make more money and then twitch will make more money and then just this is how it works but yeah i don't know what maybe bezos doesn't care i don't know <laughs> he has I, enough money right i think it might be a server issue honestly because like with the amount because yeah, yeah. you got to think i mean even like 720p 60 is that is so much bandwidth and so much like you got to have a huge infrastructure to be able to have one person 100 people let alone hundreds of thousands of people sometimes millions yeah. in a month do that so it's true i i mean i i kind of get it i i guess it'd be cooler if maybe like well, isn't there like a resolution but, but lower than 720 some people use like 648p i want to say i've never heard of that i know i know people like to stream at 900p hmm, where it's one. not quite 1080p but it's not 720p like middle ground right yeah but i don't know how that works um i just i just like to keep it simple 720p <laughs> 6, 60 fps for people and most people can like stream that you know yeah yeah and i mean even if you yeah and even if you don't get transcoding i don't know there's always like the audio version i wonder how like statistically it would be so fascinating to see statistics of how many people really just put a stream on in the background while they're yep. doing work or doing things around the house because like a lot of times when i'm cleaning or just doing whatever it's either a podcast or a like a stream some yeah. like listening to somebody in the background which is a huge reason and i know you've preached it in your videos and on your stream all the time there's one single thing you're going to invest in and upgrade audio so audio much is the number one number audio one. is so the number one and that does not mean you have to go you know spend a thousand dollars on a go xlr and a sm7b <laughs> but even like yeah. a, a hundred or a fifty dollar microphone can just do tremendous things for for a listening experience or even like you can turn almost any usb microphone into a really good sounding microphone if you do yeah. the right filters and everything in obs which i have a video on that but um yeah like there's a bunch of like compressing and you know noise gates and stuff that people people really don't realize they just like kind of take the microphone out of the box and then they just use it so but audio is definitely number one 100 percent when you see people using the blue yeti and talking into it like this way i just oh, be yeah. like what are you, no <laughs> yes oh my god i'm just like no you're doing it right read the instructions please <laughs> it, actually when i got my blue yeti it literally said like front page on the box it was like don't talk into it like fa face front this way you have to talk into it on the opposite side of the buttons <laughs> yeah and actually uh one of my videos really blew up was um it was the blue yeti versus the elgato wave one microphone it's an early video that i had and people loved it and a lot of people didn't realize how to use the blue yeti or and i was like wait what like i i'm a type of person i love to learn i love to research things and just like things that interest me i get all into it um and all of that and so I, it's kind of surprising me that people don't really like care about that kind of stuff and they're just like oh i'm just gonna plug it in and use it i'm just like oh you can do so much more with it 
Yeah, honestly, because with it's a ceiling with Twitch. Like Twitch only has so much quality they can push out for audio. So right. you can really get like a hundred dollar USB microphone and make it sound identical to a thousand dollar SM7B and Go XLR setup, or like ninety nine percent as much. So yeah. Yeah, when some people, it, it, man, it's always frustrating reading some of these Twitter comments and people are like, I'm saving up for, for a new microphone before I start streaming or I'm saving up this before I start streaming. And I'm like, if you really want to start streaming, you can literally start streaming right now, just straight off your PlayStation 4 exactly. or, or straight off your Xbox or you can use a webcam. You don't need a fancy camera. You don't need a fancy mic. You don't need fancy lights behind you like if you really want to stream or if you want to make youtube videos most people got a really nice smartphone with a great exactly. camera and you can just put it up there and you can make really high quality content with it you know yeah and i think a lot of people think that they need fancy equipment and stuff like that to get started or to even have good content and the reason why i have a lot of nice gear is because yeah it helps me but like I just like having it. It I like the 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 quality of it. But for instance, Dahlia, she just became partner and she streams this is no hate toward her cuz I love her, but she streams directly from a PlayStation console using the PlayStation camera and a, a head headset uh microphone. And she hit partner. It's possible. It's not the gear, it's literally the person and the streamer. But people are always getting hung up on oh I have to have the best gear and all that it's like you really don't honestly dude i i, I talk about dahlia hitting partner streaming from a playstation 4 all the time like it's such yeah. a it's such she is like so inspirational um for so mm. many different reasons like she's just an amazing streamer she's an amazing video game player like she just destroys souls games but yeah, yeah. it's like you do not need to have fancy equipment to start. Like if you want to start, the only thing that's holding you back is you pressing that go live button. And honestly, for a lot of people don't realize this. And I think, you know, as we've kind of grown a little bit, um, something we kind of forget is when you first start streaming and you do have those zero or one viewers, that's the best time to experiment and try yeah. new things and Kind of make a make a fool of yourself a little bit you know and and yeah. trying to figure it all out because would you rather do something that i don't know could like <laughs> just something crazy on your stream with a hundred people watching or would you rather do it with zero people watching you know right i mean me i don't care i'll, <laughs> right. I'll always do something crazy in front of everybody but no you, i like that point a lot where it's especially it's easier to do it in the early stages as you're growing because it's always harder for like bigger streamers and bigger content creators to change you know Is their it? content yeah because it might be a bigger hit since you're it's like it's that saying where like you know the bigger they are the harder they fall you know the bigger you get the harder you may fall or get hit if you like change your content but if you're smaller it's easier to like experiment and just try different things and see what kind of like content you want to put out and what kind of games you want to do and what's like your style uh before you like you grow into a bigger streamer have you like over because i know you've been streaming about a year right a little bit over a year yeah have you kind of figured out like a specific kind of video game niche you kind of want to die like you're diving into no, no it's all <laughs> variety right no uh, okay so i'm glad that you asked this because i've just been like i've been struggling if i'm being completely honest with you um very tr i like to be transparent i'm a very transparent person and i'm very upfront with people so um just stop me if you need to but no, go for I, it i've i've been struggling a little bit with my content and as me as a content creator and when I first started streaming, I was like, I'm gonna be an RPG streamer and you know, very like chat focused streamer. But then I pivoted to Souls games and I was like, I'm gonna be a Souls streamer. But then I started realizing I'm gonna run out of Souls games. I'm gonna run out of ideas for Souls games. So like, I can't just pi pigeonhole myself there. And so then I didn't know what to do. So then we started playing Hades a little bit. And then like, I've never called myself a variety streamer because that term really scares me because I, I'm a believer that like, you know, if you stick to one game or like one form of content, it's easier to grow, but niche down, 
yeah niche down but like it's not necessary i'm not saying that's necessary at all because you got you know people who can be variety streamers and then it's just them right and at, in the end it's that person i struggle a lot with imposter syndrome and so i am constantly like thinking of like do i want to pigeonhole myself in this right now or this i'm like what who am i really as a content creator i've asked audi multiple times like when you think of me as a streamer what do you think of and it's a struggle that a lot of people don't really talk about behind the camera like not knowing yourself and so right now i'm currently playing a lot of genshin impact um, and i'm really liking that game it's brought in a lot of people the community has definitely grown a lot uh from and it brings in a lot of great people i love that community and i do a lot of like marbles and drawy but i'm i'm starting to pivot away from marbles just because it it seems to be slowing down a bit um but in the end if i could just be a just chatting streamer and just talk to people and you know do that kind of stuff i would but i know you know people like video games and stuff and i do too but so currently it's genshin and like just chatting but i've been thinking a lot of like do i want to stick to genshin forever like what if i get bored of it all of that and so i've been thinking about final fantasy 14 online i actually bought that game um it was on sale and i was like i'm gonna buy this game this thing seems really cool and it looks cool to stream there's a great community behind it um but it's always i haven't tried it on stream yet because i'm always scared to like change my game and like lose viewership um but yeah that's where i'm at like right now with it i just i really don't know who i am as a streamer or like what i want to like do you know if that makes any sense no that honestly makes a lot of sense um i everything you said i i really relate to it a lot because i also too struggle intensely with imposter syndrome and just always every time i feel like i want to try something new i just see other people that are already doing it and doing it just really good and i'm like what value can i bring to wanting to do that um a big one has been youtube like it's always been a big part of my mind that if i'm gonna do stuff on twitch i also got to be doing stuff on youtube and mm -hmm. i just haven't really done that yet and i've always it was honestly watching alpha gaming and harris heller like i always kind of wanted to give my perspective on streaming and do like stream tips and stream yeah. stream ideas or kind of behind the scenes stuff and i just see a lot of other people particularly yourself who just absolutely crush it in it and i'm just like i don't know what value necessarily i could bring that hasn't already been done possibly better and sure yeah i'm very much in that place right now i'm actually taking a little bit of time off streaming um at the moment just because mm -hmm. it's been i've been having like a lot of weird mental anxiety about it a little bit um one because it's just the what you went full time recently didn't you i did um it's it's interesting because like full time essentially just like left oh, my job right right, right. and i honestly kind of thought i would be streaming more than i did but I feel like there's a breaking point when I'm streaming. It's usually around like four hours that I just can't. I just like, I, I, I truly do not understand how Happy Pigs Gaming does 24 hour streams every single week. I just don't get it. I don't know, I don't know either. I can barely do a 12. I can't even yes. do, I, I can barely do four. Yeah, I, I've done a couple 12 hour streams for like charity and some like community challenges and stuff, doing like six hour streams. And yeah, just. I don't know i just feel like my brain after maybe even like six hours i just don't know how to talk i just don't know how to converse i don't just everything kind of starts shutting down and um i usually have to be like hey wifey do you do you want to come play a game with me do you want to come yeah. chill out for a little bit and, and she's been amazingly helpful with that but yeah it, it's it's i i definitely would tell people out there if you do want to stream don't stream for like four hours or six hours or eight hours just because you think the longer you're going to stream the more growth you're going to have i think you should stream however much you're comfortable with and then yep. the time you know whether that's two hours three hours whatever the time outside of that make content on more discoverable platforms um and a big example i love to give is super mergentroid he yeah. pretty much streams like two two and a half hours every single day but every time he streams that two and a half hours it's just a party and so much energy so much fun yeah. and 
yeah you gotta you gotta know that about yourself like where your breaking point is and it's totally yeah. fine if it's only like two hours you know just make it the best two hours it can possibly be and then kind of go from there i'm a i'm a firm believer not just with streaming but like life in general um but like acting as if you know uh, tying in with like if you only have two hours to stream you know act as if you're streaming to 50 people and make it the best two hours that you can and you know you will grow a community where people will like look forward to those two hour streams um and you know you hear this a lot you, you were just talking about it like how you want to make content elsewhere bring the viewership over to twitch some people don't even have to do that it's, it's such a weird i don't know like there's some people that don't do that at all they just stream and people find them and people stick around and it's like but that's a very small percentage now it used to be flipped back in 2013 and like earlier i actually have a friend who just messaged me today actually he's a twitch partner he got partnered the six years ago and i asked him one day i was like hey man if for someone who aspires to be at that level one day have the check mark what are some tips and he was so honest with me and he said different game. i can't it's a different game now he's like i'm struggling right now i'm still a partner they don't take the check mark away but my viewership's not where it used to be anymore because it, it's a whole different game i used to just stream every day pretty much all day and i became partner now it's such a different game where you have to create content elsewhere um but going back to the whole imposter syndrome because i just think it's so important to talk about that kind of stuff because people don't really realize that side of it all they see is like while we're live or our finished youtube videos or whatever our finished tiktoks but they don't see what you do right after like yesterday i'm gonna be a transparent after my stream yesterday it wasn't the greatest stream um and I held my head in my hands like I failed like I I was just so down after it and pe people didn't see that because I shut the camera off and we raided it out people don't see that and it's content creation I think is one of the you know areas that really can hit you hard that way because it's constant pressure it's constant competition especially if you're trying to make it something um if you're just streaming for fun and all that then bless you just keep it that way because as you grow and you try to like get more serious about it 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 gets a lot more stressful um and like this whole like for the last couple of weeks like you know i have my my up weeks and i have my down weeks and so being transparent with my analytics i have my average right now is about 40 people per stream um this week and if anybody needs like this might help someone if i say this this week my streams have averaged 20 people i don't know what happened i don't know what happened it could have just been a bad week for me or just it was just not in the stars i don't know um but i averaged 20 people and i i've been feeling horrible all week behind the camera and that's why i didn't stream today and that just happens uh sometimes and i think true strength and the real successful content creators are the ones who don't give up during those hard times because I always quote this like Rocky quote because I love Rocky and I grew up with Rocky, but it's not about how hard you can hit, but about how hard you get hit and then keep getting up and moving forward. If you can, like that. yeah, I mean, there's going to be good times and there's going to be horrible times, you know, like, especially with Twitch. When the good times are there, they're like 10 times, like so good. And then when the bad times are there, like a slow week or a slow stream, then it's really bad. And I think if you learn how to just like power through the bad times, you will eventually get there like a lot of people would just give up and that's nothing wrong with that but like there's just you have to kind of face the reality there are going to be some bad times and i don't know where i'm trying to go with this tangent other than just being transparent like you're not alone if you go through that kind of stuff because it's just always ups and downs and roller coasters and it's just it's hard it's just really hard you know, I, I swear I'm I'm talking almost to a mirror right now because literally everything you said has has been happening to me also. Um, 
yeah like in in april i was averaging like 45 viewers it was playing dark souls one it, you know it was kicking ass and it's almost like when you're climbing up you're like you know maybe maybe partner could be a thing maybe 100 yeah. viewers is right around the corner and yeah. then may happened and it was like 37 ish and now in like june i've just been having like a week or two of just like 20 25 as well yeah and that's kind of I don't know. I just felt everything you said, like really hit with me because yeah, I've just been kind of inward in myself. Like, am I doing something like what's, yeah. what's been different? Um, and that's just kind of what prompted me to take a little bit of time off of streaming and just maybe kind of recenter, like, why am I streaming? Like, what's the point of this? It's, it's, I didn't start streaming for numbers or for money right. or for anything. Like what was that purpose that made me want to start streaming? And, um, yeah literally everything you said doro you are not alone in that I, I feel mirror copy everything that you said and it's 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 been a struggle recently i've had a lot of conversations with my wife i'm like you know is this was it just like a, a little bump and now it's just kind of going to go downhill from there and you know she's been like maybe you shouldn't just stream soulsborne games maybe you should look at other games and yeah. I don't know. It's just this weird mixed middle feeling. I, I don't know if it's like summertime and maybe a lot more people are going outside or going back to work with COVID opening up. And there's, there's so many, there's so many things outside of our control as streamers as to why somebody doesn't show up to a stream. You know, there's like a million right. different things of work and family, and maybe they're just kind of lost interest in Twitch, which is fine. Maybe they're going back to work from COVID. Maybe summer's here. So they're going camping or going out more and hanging out with friends. And I, I, I would definitely echo what you said and like, don't get yourself down. If, if you're getting on this content creation roller coaster, it really is a roller coaster of big ups and big downs. Um, so just kind of be prepared for that and, and just don't ever beat yourself up. And, and I always say, you know, you don't have to be ninja tomorrow or, or shroud right. tomorrow, whatever, as long as you just make yourself better, make your content better, make yourself as a person, just 1% better every single day. You'll look yeah. back in six months and be like, holy crap, I've come so far and there's still so much more to be done, you know? Oh my God. Yeah. And man, that could just be a whole podcast for you right there. Cause it's, it's just such a deep topic and it's just one last thing about that or like you just said it and it's like i'm talking to a mirror as well where it's like <laughs> i question myself and i question myself like is it me am i not meant for this is it finally just time to like quit all of that like if people don't want to watch me like they don't want to watch me i guess and all of that and i i'm i'm i was on the TikTok, and then a video popped up for me where it was like a whole like one minute video of like it was a motivational thing of like you don't quit and I, I save the video to watch it every day and it really helps me now but it's just like i just found the video last night and it was just like you know champions even have that that feeling to quit sometimes and winners and you know losers everybody does but it's the real like successful people in the end that like never quit and you have to i guess just learn how to like if you start to see things going not the way you want it to go then you know you have to not be scared to try new things um and it sucks too because like the funny thing is i don't feel that way with my youtube so i don't get like hurt about my youtube if like a video doesn't get that many views or like because i just hit a thousand subscribers where yes. to me that's thank you congratulations um, thank you um it was funny because audi was like so happy for me and i was just like sitting there like okay like my youtube videos i put in a lot of work to them but like i'm more relaxed about them like i feel more like i believe the content is good and i'm putting it out there and i'm content with it but with streaming it's completely different and i think it's because it's live and you put so much work and time in one session and then your viewership reflects like how good you did in a sense um which really hurts the ego too so it's like a different game with streaming but you know it's just you start to question yourself and all that but you're not alone a lot everybody even shroud i bet even ninja goes through that kind of stuff too you know um one thing with youtube that's so interesting though is i've heard a lot of youtube uh content creators almost make it 
almost kind of compare creating a video and, and uploading it on the platform as almost like a lottery ticket because every yeah. time you throw up a good quality video it's almost there's like a lottery chance that it could pop off it could get an everybody's yeah. recommended and you can have a video that has twenty thousand views and then you could have a video that has 500 views and it's not anything less or more on the content itself it's just kind of youtube's algorithm at work um yeah whereas yeah like you said with twitch streaming it's so it's almost the difference between like passive income and active income you know like yeah. twitch is very yeah. active you like you you don't get subs and bits and and follows and and the growth and stuff most times unless you're stream well that's not true i take that back because a lot of growth can come outside from it as well but like most of those stats and stuff hit you after streams through like the stream right. summary Whereas like YouTube, I mean, you could take a month vacation and come back and your videos could st still be growing, you know? Exactly. And it's definitely how it is with like, especially like the lottery ticket thing, because I have some videos that like have blown up and then I have some videos that like don't do so well, but as long as you believe in your content, you're making high quality content and you just want to help people. That's all that really matters. I mean, there's definitely tactics that you can use for YouTube that I do um, to like uh, YouTube is all SEO based, you know, because of Google and everything. So if you know how to optimize your videos, you have a higher chance, but it doesn't guarantee that your video will get ranked number one or people will find the video or it'll get pushed out and recommended. But you'd have a better chance than, you know, just getting recommended on Twitch, right? <laughs> right, right. And YouTube's so interesting, too, because as unfortunate of a truth as it is it's almost like the thumbnail and your title is the almost the sole reason why most people are going to click on your videos and and you could important. it really is the most important and I'm, i've thought about it from like a viewer perspective some nights when i'm like scrolling on youtube on my tv and i'm like what makes me click on a video and most times it is the thumbnail and the title and yeah. how many how many amazing videos are we passing by that we don't even know about that has just super value oriented content in it but they just have a bad thumbnail and you know it doesn't exactly. get recommended it doesn't get in the youtube algorithm and just gets lost you know yeah and that's why like for anybody who wants to start youtube i would say definitely if you're not creative you know then if you can't afford it like get someone on fiverr to make your thumbnails or what i like what i do is i so my process for my YouTube, I guess we can talk about this now, but my process for my YouTube videos is I do a lot of keyword research. I have a tool called TubeBuddy. Yeah. Um, and then it, it tells me how well that keyword would be for my channel uh, for ranking and everything and like viewership and all that. And so once I find the topic I wanna talk about and make a video on, I then type it into YouTube search to see who I'm going up against, like what other thumbnails are there. And then I like to like the ones that catch my eye, I kind of take elements from them and use them in my own thumbnail because I'm a firm believer that in today's world, there's barely any original content. I mean, you can, your personality can put a twist on it. You can put a twist on it in some way, but really there's no original content. So, and there's nothing wrong with, you're not stealing it. You're just like taking elements and like inspiration from other people. Um, and then doing that because like you said the title and the thumbnail are the absolute number one thing um there are videos that have amazing titles and thumbnails and barely any description or seo and it's ranking horribly but it blew up because people saw the thumbnail they're like, oh i want to click that and it gets a high click through rate and then yeah that's probably the most important thing so i would definitely invest time into like learning how to make good thumbnails and like i said earlier Th go into the viewers shoes like what would you click on what would you watch and then do that but for your content right like, so let's see learn it's almost like because all of us are just amalgamations of the inspirations that that drive us so you know we could have a hundred people make a hundred videos on the exact same topic but somebody who's inspired by like mkbhd and casey neistat and peter mckinnon yeah. is going to make totally different style of video than somebody who's inspired by like i don't know joe rogan you know, or, or, or like makeup artists or I don't know, but like there's so much inspiration in each one of us and so many different people that we look up to that 
yeah the the topics themselves are not original like nobody really has an original topic per se but the people who are making the video on said topic are all different strains of inspiration from all across the world that you can watch you know it's it's why we watch you know when a brand new phone comes out or a, when i was looking up go xlr reviews i watched like 10 different videos of go xlr reviews of all yeah. from different people they all said the exact same thing but every single one was edited different had a different flow you know it's like yeah. nutty's kind of you know nutty on, on yeah, youtube I yeah, yeah, yeah i love his humor so much he has like that different spark of humor than somebody yeah. like harris heller would have you know yeah and i i think there's actually a gary v video because i was actually looking up niching and like how to like find your niche and all of that because full transparency um you know my streaming tips and help is not a, like it i don't know if i'm gonna stick with that for the rest of my life or my youtube career like your first idea is never really the idea you're gonna stick with it's a it's an idea that has definitely it's a niche that it's definitely you know been doing well and i enjoy making content on it but you know two years down the road i might be doing technology reviews or video game reviews or whatever and you know you never find your idea in the like the first time but i think the gary v video i just watched about niching he was talking about you are the niche you and your personality that is your niche people like that about people it's like streaming people don't vibe with every streamer but they have their few favorite streamers because they just vibe with them it's the same thing with videos like i love harris heller's videos because he's very like straightforward and there's like no jokes or anything but then i also love stream scheme and like how he like throws in some like memes here and there and like the way he presents the information to you it's the exact same information he just presents it differently and you can vibe with stream scheme and then not vibe with harris heller so guess who gets the view and the sub stream scheme right so it's you and it can be the exact same content it's just the way you edit it and present it and if people vibe with you and your personality you know one thing i was actually talking with um my friend porto on last week's episode um mm -hmm. of uh, like last week's episode um, we talked about, we went into hot tub streaming a little bit and like the whole mentality of it and everything, but I, yeah. I kind of, I brought up, like, I, I just don't really get it from my perspective. Why, you know, some people click on the channel and like, I just don't understand the connection they make sometimes. And I, I've kind of got into the habit before I used to be like, if I, and not even just hot tub streams, but just like anything in general, if I clicked on it and I clicked away, I was just like, oh, I don't like this. It's not for me. But now if I'm on somebody's stream or on somebody's YouTube channel or something, before I click away, I actually ask myself, why do I not like this content? What is it about it that kind of like pushes me away? And on the opposite side why is it pushing me away versus other people who do gravitate to the content so somebody who might right. not like harris heller but really like stream schemes instead of just pushing harris heller away and saying no i'm not interested ask yourself why and maybe go a yeah. little bit introspective and and i think that will really kind of tell you for yourself what kind of content you really like and what you can look forward to making for yourself. It's kind of like that macro overview of your own kind of self self-interest, you know? Yeah, exactly. And even going off of that too, like, cause I know earlier you said, um, you know, kind of putting off like the whole YouTube thing, you know, from my perspective, I have about almost 50 videos now. Um, this is this is something that nobody ever wants to hear because it's the simplest advice but just start like literally your first video is going to be horrible but you have to get into the habit of making videos and then things start like popping up and you start getting inspired and then you start getting into it you just get into it um i hear low-key i prefer editing and making videos to streaming i love streaming but like I said earlier, four hours is my cutoff point. At that point, I am drained, I am tired. But with video making, I can I can film for like a couple of hours and then I can edit for like 10 hours straight. And I enjoy the process and I enjoy the making the thumbnails. I love YouTube and I just love making videos. Um, and so it's just starting. That's the biggest thing that, and like for me, man, for a long time, my first year, I was like, 
putting off YouTube because I was like, I don't, I want to start YouTube, but I don't know what kind of content to make. And like, honestly, you just have to like, yeah, but like, honestly, ask yourself, what do you watch? What do you like to watch on YouTube? and make that and if you're if you are knowledgeable about that content or whatever then make that content or like look at some of your hobbies that you have and or what are you knowledgeable about and if you're not knowledgeable about anything then just the biggest thing i would just say is just look at the content that you view and make that content but make it your own um but also saying that too though youtube's not for everybody i know everybody says oh get on youtube get on youtube but if it's not your thing then it's not your thing TikTok, it's a lot easier to to use and it's a lot quicker and people's intention spans are horrible mine included and TikTok's blowing up so just try out TikTok. you know it might be your thing i don't like instagram it's not my thing i have an instagram but i don't really use it but i love twitter so really just find like the stuff that you resonate with and then just go all in with it you know but with youtube for you especially just start it, it's i know that's like the hardest thing even if it's just like a taking one of your streams and cutting it up like the the ludwig uh formula do <laughs> do do like one of those you know like maybe plan out a stream where like you have like some high stakes or something and then make a video on it and then just get used to editing and all that because now after a year of like editing and making videos, I now have a skill, which is video making and editing. And so I've even thought recently about like opening up like commissions and like a Fiverr mm -hmm. thing to like start editing people's videos and stuff because I enjoy it. I just found a new passion, which is editing. I love it. Um, yeah, man, just starting. That's the hardest part, but it's what you have to do. I, I totally agree with that. Um, and it's almost like, I've kind of like beat myself up the past few weeks, especially about it. Cause I have, I mean, I've been doing like the podcast stuff and I'm, yep. I'm really proud about that. I'm proud of like the guests I've had on and, and the whole structure and formula of it, but I've just always wanted more. I've always wanted to do, you know, that's honestly a huge reason, a huge thing. I was so excited for having you on the podcast. Like just, yeah. I know this has turned into like a YouTube conversation, but seriously, this was like the biggest thing I just have been like dying to talk to you about. Cause sure. you, you are one of the very, 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 very few streamers I've seen on Twitch. Very few streamers who actually have taken Harris Hellers and all these other big YouTubers, big streamers advice, like where if you want to grow on Twitch, you got to make content on more discoverable platforms. And I mean, I've dabbled in TikTok and I've dabbled in some like YouTube videos, but like you really are, you really, really, really are like a huge inspiration in that regard of making like TikTok or like original TikTok content, not even just you've done like, I've seen you've done like some kind of highlights and stuff from your Twitch channel, but you've actually made like original specific content for TikTok. You've made original yeah. content for YouTube. Um, you're very active on Twitter and, and, you know, I really do look up to you a lot in that regard because like, I, I want to be in your shoes where, you know, you're making YouTube videos every week and, and you're doing all of this. So, I, I'm I'm a big fan, Dora. Really, really, really am. Not kissing ass or anything. I'm just I'm being a hundred percent honest, man. No, I that means a lot to me that I appreciate that. Um, you know, and you know what's funny? You said I'm one of the very few streamers that you know that actually does the YouTube content and stuff. It's funny that you say that because there was a Harris Heller video that I watched, I don't know, seven months ago, eight months ago, and he was like People keep asking me why I give you all this information. And here's why. It's 99% of you yes, won't aren't even it. gonna take it and do it. And when I heard him say that he was looking dead into the camera and he said that, yes. it felt like he was talking to me. And it, I was like, I'm gonna show you. I'm going to actually put your information to use and I'm actually gonna do it. And he's right. 99% of people won't do it or they might try it once or twice and then they won't see the growth that they want to see overnight and then they'll quit and him saying that really inspired me to be like no i'm going to do it and then it put me in a mentality now of like i just try things and if it fails it fails but you learn from the failures right people are afraid of failure um and i'm still afraid of it but i could guarantee that i'm more willing to fail than another like person um 
the TikTok, man, the TikTok is so, so weird. I keep trying to post on there and all of that. And I have about like almost 2000 followers on there, but some videos blow up. I just had a marbles video blow I up saw it like, today. <laughs> yeah, it has like 200,000 views and like 23,000 likes and stuff. But then all my other videos after that only average three to 400 views. So then in that, so I'm trying to give like some perspective. So then in that I'm seeing that it's not working. So I'm like, okay, what can I do? So then a lot of people have said, create a new account. And so I created a new account. And then my first two videos, like got so many views, like 2000 views and like 50 likes. I'm like, is my regular TikTok account broken then? And then, so I'm trying that, but then if that doesn't work, then, you know, the whole content creation is just figuring what works and then sticking to it until it doesn't work and then shifting. And then it's just always constantly changing and you have to be able to keep up with it, which can be very tiring sometimes. By the way, that marbles video that did blow up, it was great. I actually showed my wife today. I, we watched it uh, before she left for work and, and she was like, what, what's, what's funny about it? I'm like, just watch. And then you see your reaction as you like zoom out and it's like two or three or four. And then it's like hundreds of the little like circle yeah. things going down. It's like, why is that a course? That's like the most boring course of all time. <laughs> I, you know, what's funny though. I don't think that TikTok is funny whatsoever. I don't even, I don't like that TikTok. I'm just like, I posted it. It's the reaction. Yeah, I guess. And it blew up and I'm like, excuse me. Like why? I, f I feel like I've posted funnier TikToks that make me laugh, but nobody likes them. I'm just like, wait, is my humor broken or something? Like is this the content that you guys like okay so i don't i don't know TikTok. i really don't get i i understand theoretically what their algorithm is which that's another tip for people if you want to learn like a, a um a, a platform go all in learn the algorithm learn how you're supposed to work with it and then go with it so theoretically i know how TikTok works your TikTok goes live it go it gets shown to a small group of people like a like a I don't know what those groups are called, like a focus group. And if it has enough like engagement, like likes to views, then it gets shown to another group and another group. And it's like a ladder and that's how it does it. Oh, according to TikTok. I don't know about that though, because I have videos that have 200 views with 50 likes. You would think it would get keep getting shown to people, but it doesn't. And then I have videos that have 2000 views with 20 likes. So it's just like, I'm very confused as to how this algorithm is supposed to work. So, I mean, I've even thought about stop stopping with TikTok and just going really hard on Twitter and YouTube only. Because those are the ones I really like. Um, but I just, I can't tear myself away from TikTok because it's just, there's so much potential with it. There have been so many people that I've seen on TikTok, excuse me, that have blown up from it and their stream skyrocketed they hit partner they uh, have all the success now and it's just like if i quit like what if like what, what if? if my next TikTok would have been that and i don't know that and i think that's one of my mentalities where like that's why i don't quit on things because it's like that what if like what if the next one it's kind of like an addiction in a sense but you know <laughs> i guess it's a good addiction to have one um one thing that actually i was uh i was listening to one of harris's streams one of the last ones he did before he switched to youtube a few months back and i remember mm -hmm. he said something that stuck with me that was like he was talking about creating content on youtube and he was saying what you want to do is create content that 50 percent kind of caters to the algorithm of the platform and the other 50 percent caters to the niche that of the people you're trying to specifically target so you almost want to make the specific target, the the content, the subject and everything that you want to make, but make mm -hmm. sure it's structured, catered, introduction, call to action, everything in the way the algorithm likes to see, essentially, you know? Yeah, I didn't hear that, but that's actually a really good, you know, point. Yeah, I, like, I've heard recently of like a good way to structure like your YouTube content is like have most of it like cater to the algorithm and your target audience, but then have a couple of videos in there that are for you. Ones mm -hmm. that you know probably won't do as well, but they're mostly for you to create like to, so that you don't really get boxed in and just like really like with the algorithm, I'm only making videos for my niche and all that right. because it's gonna burn you out down the road. And so if you put in some videos that like are just creative projects and like, you know, projects for you, 
that'll keep the fire going in a sense you know and then you never know one of those videos really might blow up you never know it's it's that lottery ticket thing right like every time you submit a video on youtube or TikTok or wherever there's just there's just that potential that it could hit the lottery and then next time you log yep. on it's it's hundreds of thousands of views and goes crazy exactly and then you have so many more subscribers and then people in your stream and then there you go yeah um kind, kind of a question on that what are your thoughts on uploading TikTok content across multiple platforms to like youtube shorts ig videos do you think that's a solid like growth strategy do you think people should kind of focus on original content for each specific even though it's longer more time consuming more effort um kind of what are your thoughts on on that i would say you want to work smarter not harder so make one video that's for all of those like platforms so um but i would post them to the the so i would post them to instagram first and then the other one second and then TikTok last because if you posted to TikTok last and then you use that saved video it has the TikTok watermark, watermark. And so you don't want the TikTok watermark on all the other ones like YouTube shorts and stuff. So you want to have TikTok be last, but I would say create one video, post them on all of them and then TikTok last. Um, but I wouldn't say honestly, posting clips on like Twitter, for example, very rarely gets engagement, to be honest with you, because Twitter is very quick. People yeah. like to scroll and like read something quick or like a photo or something and then like it move on or retweet it so i don't think recycling your clips for twitter really works twitter's a whole different game but for like instagram stories or like your um especially youtube stories is or youtube shorts uh is really good i've actually stopped doing youtube shorts i had a couple of youtube shorts actually that really like that, yeah <laughs> yeah i had a few that really like got me a lot of subscribers and a lot of um views on them which was like insane i was like whoa like this is so, like this is the same thing i posted on tiktok but tiktok didn't really push it out but youtube is that's cool and i'm i'm like a little back and forth with it because my content that i push out on youtube is streamer help and you know streamer tips and like tech tips and stuff for streamers if i posted short on there about gameplay for genshin impact the algorithm is going to get confused on that and be like wait hold on a second what is your channel what is your content who are we supposed to be pushing this out to because now you're making youtube shorts that are like Genshin Impact, but you've never made a Genshin Impact video because when you upload a short, it's the same process as a video. It's just in landscape mode and then you do the hashtag shorts, but you still do your SEO and all of that stuff. So it's technically a video um, and it can really confuse the algorithm. So I've thought about creating a new account on YouTube that is just strictly for my shorts. And then if people want to follow me on my regular account, they can. But also the problem with that, I watch a lot of like YouTube help videos and stuff to like learn more about the platform. The problem is though, is if you get a lot of subscribers on your YouTube that only subscribe to you for like, let's just say that Genshin Impact or a Dark Souls short, but you're posting mainly, let's just say keyboard reviews, right? They're not interested in keyboard reviews. They're interested in whatever they subscribe to you for, which is probably that short. And so now your subscriber count is really high. And in your analytics for your YouTube, if your video is getting pushed out and not enough of your subscribers are watching that video, it's less likely that video is going to get pushed out to other people because your own subscribers won't even watch it. Which is why you don't want to like mix that bag. Um, from what I've been learning recently, like you, it's really, you gotta be cautious, like mixing that bag. Um, cause it can really actually hurt your content. Um, cause you're now you're confusing the algorithm. So I, that's why a lot of people have said, create a new account for it. If you really want to get into shorts, but shorts has a lot of potential, like from what I've seen so far. Yeah. I was going to mention that I've seen a couple content creators have like their main channel and then have a secondary, like short specific channel. Um, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's 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 weird i've heard some people try to incorporate shorts on their main channel but then they found it's like affected their watch time 
because yeah. obviously shorts are less than a minute. So if, so if it's a 15 right. second short and you regularly do 15 minute videos, of course it's going to affect your watch time just because it's shorter. Um, right. So shorts are shorts are interesting, but yeah. And like, uh, or sorry, what were we going to say? I was just going to say, like, I mean, making shorts like based around the content that you make. So like if you made shorts that were in line with like keyboard reviews or whatever your content is, then that makes more sense. But yes, with a watch time, YouTube really likes a high watch time because if it, the more people are watching your content in your video, the more they will push out that video because they say, hey, right. people like to watch this and they stick around for it. So we should push it out to more people. If you have a very short watch time or like I call it like a, a bounce rate, people pop in yeah. and they like pop out, then it's less likely that video is going to get pushed out. This is why like I've tried like making shorter videos and I'm like from what I've seen, my sweet spot for my videos is about five to eight minute long videos. Anything longer than that, my in the analytics, the graph starts to go down really bad. So uh, for me, for my content and my style, um, longer videos aren't really helping me grow right now. Um, but yeah, you definitely have to like look at that kind of stuff, too. One of my favorite um, new YouTube channels I've just recently discovered um, is called Optimum Tech, I believe. And he does okay. like amazing, amazing thumbnails, amazing, like really high quality videos. Um, and his videos, yeah, usually between that six to eight minute mark. I think there's something where if you go over 10 minutes, you can get like, is it double ad revenue or put like two ads in or something? Uh, you get monetization, I think, if you if it's 10 minutes or more. Mm -hmm. um, from what I understand. So like, yeah, you can like put ads and stuff and make money off of a video if it's at least 10 minutes, um, which is why you see so many creators have like literally 10 minute videos or like barely 10 minutes. You're just like, oh yeah, I see why. <laughs> 10 minutes and five seconds and you're like, I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It, but it's almost like, a, you know, when we're talking about the most important factors that cause people to click on videos being like thumbnails and, and uh, the titles. One thing I've noticed yeah. also for myself that will cause me to click on something or maybe even save it for later and maybe not even watch it is also the watch time if i see something is like 30 minutes long but i'm in the mood to watch something that's like five minutes long that could affect it as well regardless of how amazing or enticing the thumbnail and title can be exactly and honestly that's why it's so important now that uh youtube has the um the chapters built in now yes. so like if you if you, in your descriptions if you do chapters and then you like put your time codes in there the timeline of the video will like be broken up into those time codes it's extremely important that you do that now because if you don't people will probably just click off the video but if you give them the chance to be like hey you might be looking for a specific thing i'm talking about you can click there and then it keep it's more potential for them to stay and keep watching your video um and there's a lot of like youtube things that I never realized and I'm still learning uh, about that kind of stuff. And I'm just like, wow, like something as little as time codes, but it makes so much sense, like goes a long way. I was actually going to mention that one of the things I absolutely love about your videos is the fact that you do. You have the intro, you have the chunks of the different material and then like the, the fin final thoughts conclusion ending. Um, yeah. that is really, really nice. And even if it does, it's almost like a sacrifice because some people who might watch the entirety of the vid video might only skip to certain parts, but at the same time, people who might not watch any of the video might actually watch a little bit, you know? Exactly. And uh, from my perspective, when I watch people's videos, I, I actually, what's funny is I actually get mad if a video doesn't have uh time codes now because I'm just like, me personally i love time codes because i like to browse it really quick to see what they are they're going to talk about and then like a preview I, exactly and then i'm like okay those are some interesting topics i'm just going to watch the whole video and um just let it play through or i might skip to a certain one and it's like it, it, it just kind of shows that the content creator took the time to like do that for people i went back and i did that to like 85 to 90 of, percent of my videos i i one night I just went through all my videos and I watched them and I was adding time codes to all of them. And it was a process, but it's because I want people to watch the videos and I want them to be entertained and I want them to get the information that they want to have, you know, because sometimes you don't have to watch a whole video. You're just there for one thing and I got you. It's at this time code. <laughs>
That's so true. That that was a big one thing I actually just started with my last episode of the podcast was I created a secondary YouTube channel specifically for like like clips section of it because I sure. came to this conclusion like watching a lot of other podcasts on YouTube. I'm like some people love two three hour podcasts they put on the background and kind of zone out with other people really just want like 10 minute little chunks like the Mm -hmm. I don't want to say the best bits, but kind of like the highlighted portion of what they talk about. And they're two completely different audiences. And I was trying to explain it to my wife the other night. And I'm like, some people love long form content and other people really don't. They, they still want to see Joe Rogan and insert or Elon Musk talk about something, but they don't want to spend three hours like watching it. They want to get the, the juicy bits, if you will, you know? So, and I think putting chapters in videos like that really does help a lot so yeah oh yeah the big difference between long form content and short form content and even like i don't know what you'd call tiktok like micro short content i would just call that short form content short you know form content is, i've honestly i fall under the i like the long videos so i love to watch a full watch through of like joe rogan and robert downey jr you know just oh, talking yeah. and I, I like to just watch the entire thing i can watch a three-hour video or i'll just put it on on my second monitor or something while i'm doing stuff and then just watch it but i also love tiktok as well but i don't know tiktok is the platform where i get all my memes from and that's how i stay young i guess <laughs> stay young what how how old are you are you 29 26 okay yeah i feel old though and i feel like do you ever have this feeling that like you're running out of time every single day honestly (laughs) (laughs) or like just like with like things in your life and what you want to accomplish it's like you're running out of time you gotta do it right now i hate that feeling it's like i know i have a whole life ahead of me to accomplish things but it doesn't feel that way you know it feels like i need to have my shit together right. in my 20s <laughs> you know? i totally feel that so much and i feel like the more even as like content creators the more we want to try new things or explore other platforms or do a second youtube channel with some different kind of content or there's just always so much it's like you start one project and that turns into three projects and now all of a sudden there's just there's so much to do and so little time and that's a big reason i think it's really important that content creators really do consider taking like real vacations away from the internet um that's something i've been doing this week and something i I, i'm gonna try to do maybe even like a two or three times a year honestly maybe even more but just like take time away to disconnect the people will be there for you when you get back um and i mean even if you lose a little bit of viewership the amount of mental refreshness you get from it oh, is yeah. just going to catapult you far and beyond whatever whatever you lost you know exactly and that's something i still struggle with where i hate breaks i it scares me because i'm always scared that people won't be there when i come back or i'll lose a lot of viewership and it, it's like then the thing i hate is like talking about like i guess what we were talking about earlier where like you see your you're talking about this actually literally, literally earlier where like you start to see your viewership go up and you're like whoa partnership maybe one day like it's going up it's we're, right we're doing it and then it Ooh. just catapults just goes right back down and you didn't do anything like nothing changed but it just happened and then you don't then you start to feel like oh no what's happening and all of that and I always have that feeling with breaks too. Just like if I take a break and I come back, no one's going to be there. Everyone's going to leave me, blah, 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 blah. But that's not, it's not true. You might lose a little bit of viewership, but like you said, the mental headspace you're going to be in, you're going to be like even more powerful than ever. And you could go longer in a sense. And it's kind of like a job where like you do need vacation days and you need PTO days um, to like just function as a normal human, you know? I totally There's so agree. much content that we can like take in and so much work that you can put in until it's just like, dude, relax, relax and, a little. And I guess the, the fear out of it too is, you know, there's there's always there's always so much more that can be done but if you just keep relentlessly pushing yourself you're just gonna burn out and eventually you're gonna yeah. get to a point where you just like I, I started realizing the last few times i was streaming i'm just like i was sitting at my computer getting ready to press the button to go live and i'm like i just don't really want to stream today and and it almost yeah. becomes like a burden and and 
I don't know that that passion that initially catapulted you to start going and to like push for those numbers it, it really starts to wane on you and you know when you were talking just a moment ago I almost realized a lot of us always give the big advice like a big mental big mental help for a lot of people streaming is to turn off the viewer count so you yeah. don't see it going from 30 and then you have a conversation about something and then it drops down to 17 and you're like oh did i say something did i piss somebody off yeah. what did i do and then just all of a sudden you're in your head you've lost out of it and it's hard to get back from that it's almost like a different version of that in like a bigger macro view when you start to see you're averaging 30 viewers 35 40 45 and then you drop down to 25 and you're like oh no it's it's like the exact same feeling but instead of like a minute by minute process it's like a week by week process you know exactly that's actually a really good point that's exactly what it is same feeling you know it's the same feeling I, I i never look at my viewer count anymore like there was a little bit of a time a couple months ago where i would peak i haven't peaked in months now like i literally don't care to look at it anymore which is so nice um but it's like but now i kind of have this weird anxiety thing of like when i go to raid because you see it there yeah technically the raid is going to show you how many people are there and i get like anxious when i do that now um and then i kind of get anxious it's like look at my you know my my analytics afterwards for the stream summary and i've thought about even like not even looking at my stream summary anymore and just like doing my thing maybe that'll help but the problem is is that if i don't look at it then i don't know if i'm going up or down um and it's just it's hard when you put in so much work and you finally hit like 30 average and then 40 average and you're like yeah this is really a thing and then you start to see it go backwards and it's kind of like you feel like your work is being undone in a sense just like oh my god like i'm failing i'm a failure that's going it's going reverse now how do i stop it i don't know how to stop it and it, i don't know how to fix that honestly like or will you ever get over that <laughs> you know in a sense yeah and then you know uh, when, when you see it going backwards then the next day right as you're gonna go live you're like uh oh because now you're stuck in your head you know you're like yeah. dude I'm, I'm only getting like 20 viewers or 25 like and then you got to press that go live button and it's like just this constant under mental status that's just kind of eating at you you know even when you're streaming for hours it's just like oh at least for me it's kind of like always in the back it's like i don't know how many people are there because i always turn my view counter off but you know same thing you said I, i've really considered just not looking at my stream summary at all and but at the same time you can't really navigate your ship and see what direction you're going if you don't at least look and see i don't know because i mean at the same time i don't know at the same time like how much we make content on twitch in regards to playing games and stuff there's a part of me that's just like if you just make content on more discoverable platforms that's really good content you don't really even have to look at your Twitch summary because right. it will just take care of itself. And, and it might take a week. It might take a month. It might take a year. Somebody might be able to stream straight from their console and hit partner. And it might take you six years to do it. But like, if you are confident in where you're going and you believe in your content and you're always trying to make better content, um, right. on platforms that actually have an algorithm, <laughs> um yeah the rest will kind of take care of itself so it's a weird it's a weird middle spot to be in you know it's like you want to look because it's human nature to want to look at numbers but if you look at the numbers you get like super focused and addicted to them but if you don't look at the numbers you can't really navigate so it's like a lose-lose right. -lose situation either way you go you know yeah and it's just like like I said earlier with my YouTube videos, I don't have that same stress as I do with my my streams. Like I it's because I when I put when I make my videos, I know I'm making them the best that I can at this moment for with my skill set and I believe in my content and if it if the video does well, it does well. If it doesn't do well, it doesn't do well. But like I still believe that one day it will hit you know. I have that weird belief, but with my streams, it's like I have my streams on like a really weird pedestal or of some sort where i stress so much about it and i wish i had the mentality that i do with my youtube channel like that i could have with my stream um because that stress is just too much it's just too much for a content creator and 
um you need to like be able to gauge where you're going and stuff but it's just like when you when you start hitting plateaus like i feel like i've been stuck in the 30s and like i've been now getting into the 40s but now it's going down a little bit last few streams like it's, i feel like i've been stuck here and it's like i don't know what else to do to like keep going you know and i saw a tweet actually the other day from someone who just got partnered and he was like i've been streaming for six years and i finally got partner and it, it like really hit me i was like man like okay like it's different for everybody you know he finally got where he wanted to be in six years where other people do it within a year yeah would i rather do it in a year hell yeah but also in the same time though you never know like this is gonna sound really weird i guess but like people who take longer to get there I feel like have a more established community and like will be there even longer because it took them longer in a sense, you know, versus mm. like getting everything quickly because it's all about the journey, right? Yes. You know, like, because like think about something that you really wanted and now you have. Like, how do you feel about having that thing now? It's, it's completely normal to you to have that thing. And so there's like the fun of getting that thing that you wanted is no longer there. And you have to really learn how to enjoy the process i think of trying to get there because once you hit partner then it's like okay cool for a couple for a few days you're gonna be like man i did it i'm validated and all of that but then Got after the a couple mark. of weeks yeah <laughs> but then after a couple of weeks i always ask new partners i'm like like poppy fubar i asked him i was like hey how do you feel now and he goes dude nothing's changed yeah. like i'm i'm still just i, I have a check mark there that's it that i don't get a salary i don't nothing really changed sometimes other partners are more willing to talk to me now because they see a, a check mark but that's it and so if that's the payoff then it's just like you know you got to focus i guess more on good quality content changing people's lives and stuff that's the more important thing and then everything else will come but that's easier said than done though because you know the day-to-day -day can really hurt your ego i guess and everything you know when you have your ups and downs so here's a question for you that might be controversial do you okay. think we as twitch streamers put way too much emphasis on this title called twitch partner do you think it's yeah. not worth the i mean maybe not worth it isn't the word for it but like we just idolize this check mark and yeah there's yeah you think so we do um i'll give you an example i have a, the same friend that i was talking about earlier who got partnered a long time ago you go to his channel he has a check mark there so you'd be like whoa he's a twitch partner so cool guess what the reality of it is he's a bartender and he has to work a day job pay his bills and he averages this is no hate toward him but he averages like 50 to 60 people as a twitch partner now he doesn't make any more money you know other than what people sub and gift and all of that so like is that what we're idolizing like a, a check mark right there i could probably honestly go to i i used to do front end web developments so i could probably go to my twitch page and go into the source and like just kind of have fun with it and put the check mark right there and be like oh cool that's what it would look like and that's it though that's literally it i think people and myself included have the wrong mindset sometimes and it's just like i need to hit that and it's just, it's just validation yeah. that's all it is you know but it's in the end it's not really about that it's about what are you doing for your content to help people to entertain people you know and poppy fubar for instance was making a lot of money at his level before he was partner from twitch streaming he didn't even need the check mark to be honest with you he was making a lot of money doing it and if that's your goal then yeah but like honestly once you hit partner you don't automatically get a check for 20 million dollars it's like hey you hit partner now Good you're job. rich it doesn't work that way it's just like cool you get an email and your partner and then some people are hyped for you and then actually statistically the worst part about it is you will have a dip in viewership yep. initially because people are like cool we did our job and we're out and it's like i don't get that mentality but like in the same time i do because like once you start to see some people i guess get big maybe you feel like you won't get as much attention i don't know um and maybe it opens up a few doors for you as well but other than that what else honestly 
I would say focus if if you want to make it a career that pays you money so you can pay your bills, I would say focus on YouTube or other platforms where you can make money because like you, you can really make a lot of money from YouTube. Um, yes. More so than from, Twitch. Way, way more. And so I would focus your efforts there, to be honest with you. And like, honestly, I've thought about it this way. It used to be where streaming was my everything and i was like this is how i will find my audience and everything and then i'll bring them to my youtube where it should actually be the opposite yeah. my 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 youtube content should be my content where i find my audience that i'm trying to help and then i can bring them over to my twitch where they can engage with me live honestly your streams should just be times where you want to engage with people live and then your other content should actually be your main content offline where anybody it's like the passive income you know mm -hmm. a lot of like wealthy people have money in real estate because it's passive income it just makes them money monthly and that's the best way to do it which is you know racking up views and sub counts and stuff like that in that currency from youtube and twitter that's how you really do it um and then because then from there you can branch out into like brand deals and you know sponsors, sponsors. Yeah. yeah exactly like honestly focus on youtube to be honest with you and the streaming second but i think a lot of people kind of like Go the i think opposite. people like they do the opposite and i even fall into that trap sometimes even currently where i'm just like putting so much emphasis on the stream when it's just like no dude actually just go harder on the youtube and you know i think it's opposite. because i think it's because youtube is harder you know for a lot mm -hmm. of people um i think because literally streaming is just go live, play video games and chat with people that pop in for a lot of people. Whereas YouTube, you really need to make content and edit it. And I mean, not everybody does. Some people just post clips and stuff and get two views yeah. on them. And they're kind of lost in the YouTube, you know, the YouTube void of whatever, of <laughs> yeah. a million videos. But I think you know, I would say if there's anybody that is interested in streaming and or anybody that's currently streaming, a big thing that I heard from Stream Schemes actually a couple days ago is he recommended people to put 75% of their energy into making content, whether that's YouTube, TikTok, whatever, like make original content and spend that remaining 25% streaming and building your community through Twitch. Like, so if you're gonna, if you have five days, just as an example, spend three of them, you know, making a lot of really high quality content. And then the other two, maybe have some content you make later in the day and stream in the earlier part of the day. But so many people just are like, yeah, the days of streaming eight hours every single day on Twitch and building huge communities and partner, it can be done, but it's the exception to the rule phrase yeah. you know like there's definitely a few anomalies like to name i guess a few like happy pigs the dude does 24s every every week and he grows a lot so for him it works um and i know he does a lot of networking and he does a lot of stuff out there as well but he doesn't have a yeah. youtube channel or anything like that but he, he also has that niche yeah he has that niche aspect of it like if like i love mike to pieces but if you did take away that 24 hour aspect of it and streamed on a more normal schedule, would you say he yeah. probably wouldn't have grown as quickly or as fast as he did? Because do I talk to ever, I talk to so many people on Twitch and we always bring up happy pigs all everybody knows him as the 24 hour guy. I'm like, do you know, yeah. like this guy streams 24 hours every single week. Oh yeah. Happy pigs. I know him. And it's, it's, yeah. you know, it's kind of like a part of his brand almost. And, yeah. you know, I really hope he doesn't do it forever because I hope he doesn't do it forever. I, I hope he kind of I'll, ju takes I'll just say that he does not plan to do it forever, but I won't speak on his behalf. Okay. But he's definitely talked to me about that. And I don't think he plans to do it forever. Good. I mean, who, who could? Honestly, right. who could? That's like abnormal to even do as many as he's done now, <laughs> to be honest with you. I was going to say, who can do two weeks of 24 hour streams <laughs> like right? that? I don't He's know. all casual, like, yeah, number 36, 24 he hour stream. Like, yeah. And he, but the thing is, though, he's so passionate about it and he loves it. Um, so he definitely found like his thing. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing to do is like 
find your thing and what works for you experiment and to find that, that thing exactly and that's the, the only way you'll find out what your thing is is by trying new things totally and agree. just being okay with like possibly failing and yeah you know like i said earlier like the, the the streaming tips and stuff i love making those videos for people because i just i like helping smaller streamers that like are smaller in viewership than me but that might not be the content i do in a year from now like it i might it's that what if again what if there's some content niche that i don't even realize right now but if i started doing that i was passionate about was 10 times better for me you know like i already have a few ideas in my phone for things that i'm passionate about that i would love to like make content on um and you never know they might be even better for my youtube channel and i would if i was doing that at first then it would have been even better but the way i look at it is I now know how to edit videos in two different softwares and I know the process of YouTube and stuff now. So now I have the tools. So now if I do switch my niche, I'm more prepared for it, you know? So I guess kind of stemming off of that, is there any particular niche you're kind of thinking or are we kind of keeping it on hush hush for now? No, uh, yeah, I love video game reviews. I absolutely adore watching people's opinions, small creators, big creators. Um, on new video games that come out and then video games that like I have interest in that I've never played before. Like, dude, I, I looked up a system shock Two review a couple of weeks ago. Cause I was like, I kind of want to play that game. And I was like, Hmm, let's see what YouTube does and it has to say about it. And I watched a few videos on system shock reviews. I love video game reviews and I would love to do that kind of content. Um, and the thing is a lot of people have told me, Oh, you know, that's pretty saturated. I'm like, yeah, you know what? Everything's pretty much saturated. True. And so, it's like if with that mentality that a lot of people say that was like oh you know there's a lot of people that are rich so you really shouldn't even try <laughs> it's like okay well with that mentality no one would be rich no right. one would have their youtube channel or their twitch streams if, if you've told that to somebody you know a lot of people stream maybe you shouldn't try then like you know you might have just caused someone from hitting the big leagues with streaming you never know and so i always just tell them you know a lot of things are saturated but if it's something i'm passionate about making videos and content on you know there are some the thing is there are some uh video game reviewers that i don't like their reviews i just don't like the way they present the information but but people do they have hundreds of thousands of subscribers so there's always room someone might really like the style of me talking and the way i talk about video games there's always an audience um i guess the only so thing on on video game reviews that like completing a video game can be pretty time consuming and then that's putting yeah. together some of those reviews can be pretty time consuming so yeah have you thought be, about that aspect of it i have <laughs> uh, i've definitely thought about that because like you know that's a lot um so i actually have a an idea that i've talked to autumn about but she wasn't really on board with it and sweetheart if you're watching this this is no hate on you um but my idea was and if someone steals this idea whatever but the idea was making a one minute review on a video game that i play in my own time as quickly as i can but like make a one minute review on it to post on TikTok, and it's called one a minute reviews and then if you want me to get more elaborate into it then you can go to my youtube channel where we have a five minute review on it and then the how i would play the video games is on stream that so that's pretty cool so that's taking the content yeah so it's all linked together so i play the game on stream so people can watch me and talk to me and then i edit out the sound um from the stream and then i would just do a voiceover for the review for the TikTok and for the youtube channel um my only issue right now i have is my camera that's in the um you know in in the stream but then also autumn brought up the point of like you know if you do that you might lose some viewership that you've built up right now on twitch um and i was you'd have to like live with that you'd have to be okay with that as like and i and that that's totally fair because i might like what if i decide to review um some i don't know weird game like near automata like what if my viewership doesn't want me to want to watch me play it and i'm averaging 15 people but I, 
I make YouTube content and stuff on it. Would I be okay with that? You know, in a sense, um, a channel that actually does this idea uh, is Girlfriend Reviews. I don't know if you've ever yes, heard of them. They're so yeah. good. I freaking love, they blew up. They you did. know how I found them? I found them the first day actually that they posted on Reddit. And I was like, this video is hilarious. And I remember, I was one of their first like couple thousand subscribers and now they have millions of subscribers. And that's what they do actually. They don't stream with cams. They stream the video games that they're going to make a video on. And then, you know, they make the whole video on it. So they, they link it. So one thing I'll, I'll kind of throw out there on it. Something that I absolutely loved about Streamlabs OBS that regular OBS does not have in Streamlabs OBS, you can have certain aspects of your stream that will not show up in the actual recording aspect. So you oh, could, really? you could have your camera, your chat, your alerts, all of that. And you could turn it to where it's only visible on stream. So the recording mm. will just be the gameplay. That is something I loved about Streamlabs that, that OBS that doesn't actually, have. That could actually help a lot. I mean, yeah, you got I a like beast that. of a PC, so you can take know, that yeah. extra CPU power, right? That's true. But yeah, that's that's one of my uh, my ideas for content. I also have ideas like tech reviews because I love watching tech reviews and stuff like that. I just bought a new pair of headphones that I thought about making a video on, but like they don't really tie in with streaming because you don't use them for streaming. Um, but I love tech and technology and just... I love buying tech and like learning about it. So I would love to make videos on that. Now, granted, I know it's very saturated, but if it's something you're passionate about, you know, yes. people will people will feed off of that. They'll know that you're passionate about it. If you're doing it for like, oh, this could get me rich and famous and stuff, people will know one way or another. It's like, oh, this yeah. guy's not really genuine about it, you know? Those are really the ideas I have right now. And, you know, I just kind of look at what, what I like to watch and what I'm interested about. And then I just make content on that so i'm not really worried about if streaming tips doesn't if i run out of ideas which i doubt i will but you know if i ever run out of content for that i'm not really afraid i'd just be like okay cool i'm gonna start new content do you think if you did that you'd create a second youtube channel for it or would you just kind of rebrand your own your main one i don't know that's the that's 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 a tough one too because i just thought about that right before you asked um I don't know. I would probably, I'd probably go off of like my, what I've built up so far, because if, if what Gary V says is true, or like your personality is your niche yeah. and the way you present information and stuff, people will more than likely watch your videos. There will definitely be people who don't want to watch your videos anymore because it's completely different. It's a huge change, but niching down can be very dangerous for content creators. Cause what if, you're technically putting your eggs and all in one basket in a sense where it's just like what if that content no longer does well or you get burnt out as a creator for it you know so i'd probably stick with the same account but if that didn't work you know i would still you know create i'd probably create another account but the thing is though the funny thing is i don't really look at my subscriber count because there's an analytic in your YouTube uh, channel where it's like it shows where your videos are being most viewed and you want the bar to be mostly in not subscribed because right. um, that's how it gets shown to new people who will then subscribe. So there's always going to be new people um, to watch your videos and stuff. So I wouldn't be like too worried about it. And there's just so many niches and stuff. And for anybody who thinks that's too late to get on YouTube, it really is not there there's new creators every day that are blowing up and there's just there's enough space it's again it's you as a person if people vibe with you and they the way you present that information to people and educate people or entertain people you know it's that old saying like the best time to plant a tree was 30 years ago the second best exactly. time to plant it is today exactly <laughs> i love that actually that is so true um so kind of stemming off that we do got to talk about Elden Ring, dude. Did you see the trailer today, man? That actually, you just reminded me. Um, that's another like content thing that I have ideas for too. Reactions? I, I, not reactions, yeah, but it would tie in with um, video game news because I'm. I, that's actually one of the things I'm extremely passionate about. Um, I used to want to be a journalist actually, but I hate writing. 
but I love making videos. So I could still do that in a sense of videos. I know a lot of people still do that, but that goes back to that conversation. But that's another idea. I love video game news. I E3 is literally, has literally been the Super Bowl for me every year since like 2009. Yes. Dude. And so I'm so, I was so distraught that last year we didn't get it, but this year we're getting it. And dude, Elden Ring. It's real. <laughs> It was it was funny. It was trending on TikTok this uh, not TikTok uh, on Twitter this morning that there was a rumor that the trailer would be shown. And I was like, don't get my hopes up because you guys are always saying that. And then Jeff Keeley is just like, we got one more thing for you. And I was like, oh my god, dude, it looks so good. So, um, wifey and I were watching. Have you heard of Hey Zeus? Here's Toast. He's a Bloodborne streamer. No, he no. does. He does like Bloodborne speed runs. He does like. Definitely would recommend check him out, dude. He's amazing. Okay. He does like Bloodborne speed runs, no hit runs. He does like mods of Bloodborne with randomizers okay. and stuff. He's very like Soulsborne focused, um, sure. but he has like this crazy long Gandalf beard. And we were watching E3 like on his channel um, today. And it was like, if we don't get Elden Ring news, I'm going to shave my beard. So he literally <laughs> right towards the end was like, I'm just going to go get my razor right now. So he like left, grabbed his razor, came back and then we're watching it and wifey was like you know on elden ring's youtube channel there's a video that's hidden and that just posted today and it says because you know if you go in playlists it'll say like yeah. this video but it's hidden but it'll oh, say what? like uploaded today and i was like what <laughs> and so i'm like good, no what? way maybe the, maybe it'll be like this thing is still real and then we got the trailer and not only did we get the trailer it's said it's going to be released in like six months yes oh. january which is complete like that's a complete from software move because Boss they move. exactly they don't they wait until they have a set date and then they really show off the game. Like Sekiro, I think was like four months before it came out where they finally showed it. Um, and I know we got that teaser for Elden Ring like two years ago at E3 at the Xbox event. The CGI um, movie thing. Yeah, where it was like the voiceover and it was like making the ring and stuff. Oh my God, but I was okay. So I was <laughs> playing Apex today uh, on my day off and just like I had Jeff Keighley's um, Summerfest up. I was watching it. And there was some really good stuff. Like I'm, I'm a huge Borderlands fan, so I was oh. so happy to see the Tiny Tina, um, knock, not knockoff game, but like uh, her own game that's based off of like her DLC in Borderlands Two, which is like fantasy and all that. It's like okay, that's cool. And then some other stuff. I was like, man, okay, no Elden Ring. And it was funny because all the YouTube uh, chat comments were like, Elden Ring, Elden Ring, Elden Ring, like the entire Please. stream. And then he was like, we got one more thing for you. I was like, okay, what is it? And then I saw, like, it was, I saw from the graphics, like from software's engine. And I was like, they were petting the horse. And I was like, wait, that looks like from software's engine. And I was like, it's Elden Ring. Dude, I freaked out. I've watched it probably like two or three times already. <laughs> the gameplay, it looks like Dark Souls 3 mixed with like Sekiro in a sense, because it's more open and more traversal, um, like Sekiro was oh my god i the enemies look sick the the powers the the mount that you get where you can just like ride around yes. and the, the, it's very open i didn't realize how open it was gonna be um i'm and then when i was like i was like please give me a release date give me a release date and then they said january i was like no way and it's like let's hope it doesn't get pushed but like oh my god and it's coming the last gen too man me yeah, last gen is as as both of us lucky PlayStation Five holders. <laughs> it's it might be um, <laughs> privileged, might be the best word to say. But I kind of, oh, I kind of wish games would like have a definitive like this is going to be next gen only, so they can like a hundred percent focus on the graphic graphical aspect of it. Because if it's going to be right. last gen as well, there has to be some compromises to to the next gen made. A little bit so it can work Especially. on last gen as well but like i'm just so freaking happy for it um it, right when i saw it i'm like this totally looks like miyazaki miyazaki has such a unique like dark way of like creating characters like the enemies yeah. and, and and i can see it like i'm playing through dark souls 2 right now yeah. and you can you can totally see the difference between dark souls 1 enemies and dark souls 2 enemies it's just like dark souls 1 they look 
horrific and nightmarish and and like like whose mind would think of stuff like the same with bloodborne you're like yeah how do how do these enemies and monsters come to be and then just seeing some of them in elden ring i'm like oh my god i just i cannot wait to fight against them to visceral them to backstab them it's gonna yeah. be so good i'm i'm beyond stoked for it um and i'm glad that miyazaki is actually working on it because you know with two being the weakest link to a lot of people myself included like he wasn't working on that project he was working on bloodborne at the time which is he even said in an interview bloodborne is his Master. masterpiece and i'm like yeah it is my favorite game of all time um but i'm glad that he's working on this one i'm like oh, dude it it just looks so freaking good and like you were saying i kind of just wish that like I get it because like you, you can't even find a PlayStation Five. It is so hard to find one. I'm, I got so lucky. Hell, I got lucky. I was able to get two: one for Mike and one for me. Um, yeah, I got so lucky with it. But not everybody. No one can get one. Right. And so I feel like if it was more in stock and more people could like get one at a then store, maybe. then maybe these games could start finally shifting over to next gen slash current gen um because i'm the same way i mean but it, this is coming from someone who owns a ps5 right that like i wish elden ring was strictly just ps5 xbox series x because i wanted to put all the focus and attention to it like um demon souls just exactly. ps5 and it looks amazing exactly like demon souls um I still say is one of the best looking games, even from a PC player standpoint, it was one of the best looking games I've ever like laid my eyes on. That game, the graphics are insane. And there was like Fire. a meme going around that I was like, cause Mike kept telling me, oh no, Ghost of Tsushima is. And I'm just like, no, Demon Souls is. And that's why I'm so happy that Ratchet and Clank that comes out tomorrow, that is already preloaded, um, is strictly just PS5 and like i'm currently playing through the 2016 version of it and it looks great but i'm excited to see they put all their effort into this one strictly for ps5 and i just i wish we were at a point now where we could just start getting games like that but with the current market maybe one day <laughs> so i gotta ask as both of us are also probably in that privileged mode of owning very powerful pcs are you going to be getting it on PC or are you going to be getting it on PS5? Uh, so that's, that's so funny. So, okay, I have a PS5 and then I have a Series X and then I have a really good PC with a 2080 Ti in it. But I prefer to play games on my PS5 because I don't like sitting at my desk to play a video game. It's that mentality of I'm at my desk all day, either editing or streaming. And so then I start to correlate it with work. And so then I don't want to like play a video game at my desk. So luckily the consoles are so powerful now that there's barely any difference really. And so PS5 probably, honestly, I've thought about just selling my Series X because it is gathering dust now, but definitely PS5, especially with the DualSense controller. Oh, I don't yeah. know they might come out with an update where it's like you can feel the sword clanging like in demon souls how that was that was sick you could feel like the blade hitting people which is yes so cool did you play astro's playroom by any chance yes i love that game i was like this game is so good i i wanted to like 100 it that's how good it was yeah i played a little i just played like maybe an hour or so of it but the mm -hmm. way it used the dual shock controller just immediately i'm like oh my i cannot wait for more games to use this um yeah i'm i'm it's so cool yeah i have a my ps5 it's actually over there like connected to my whole stream setup because i like use mm -hmm. it for streaming and my playstation 4 is out in the living room and i was thinking about it the other day i'm like i have a ps5 and i literally don't play any ps5 games on it i like only <laughs> play ps4 games on it aside from demon souls um which is a pretty short game so i kind of got through it pretty quickly yeah. um but i mean it's nice you know because games load up insanely fast like it's it's it makes dying and in, in bloodborne and these souls games a little bit more manageable when it loads up super quick <laughs> well yeah i mean and, and the thing is too is like dark souls uh three got uncapped to 60 fps mm. sekiro did as well on ps5 ghost of tsushima now does 4k 60 god of war does so it's kind of like they got like ps5 patches i know you're a huge final fantasy fan yeah and 
the PS5 version of Final Fantasy VII came out today. So if you own the PS4 version, you can just upgrade it for free. So I did that right before the podcast because I actually nice. stopped playing it because they had announced the PS5 version. I was like, well, I'm just going to wait to play it so I can play it really good you know yeah um but yeah i i want more ps5 specific games so ratchet and clank is my next one tomorrow and then i don't know what else is coming out that will be specific to next gen um battlefield looks sick but i'll probably get that on pc so i don't know how important do you think it is for streamers to have games they play offline as well do you think that's pretty important very I, especially like if gaming is one of your hobbies because this is going to sound weird, but like if you correlate something with work, you're probably going to resent it later on or like hate it. So like I used to work at a call center and the last thing I wanted to do when I got off work was be on a phone. Um, I hated talking on the phone. I still do to this day. So if you start to correlate playing video games with work, quote unquote, you'll probably start to resent it. So that's why it's like it's so important to a have other hobbies but b play different video games you know to like that's why like i play a lot of apex legends off stream or or just like go through my backlog of games so that it just takes my mind off of like genshin and all of that and i barely play any genshin impact off of stream other than doing like my daily stuff but like other than that i don't play because i don't want to get burnt out on it so i just think it's super important and that's also another thing too was like I love the Souls games, which is why I don't play them on stream anymore because I don't want to ruin them for myself, you know? Like if I want to just play, I'm thinking about replaying Demon Souls on a new game plus, um, but if that's all I played on stream, I would never want to touch that game again probably, right? Do you think it's because when you play on stream, you're, because I've noticed this myself as well. I used to not play any games offline. Like I would just save them for playing on stream. And then it was Bloodborne. When I first played Bloodborne, that was the game after I beat it. I'm like, I like this game so much that I want to play it like for myself offline. And I started to realize again, playing video games, not for an audience, but just for myself, I started to realize you really play it differently. You're like more engrossed in it. You're more like focused yeah. on it. Whereas like when you're streaming, you're kind of like 50% on the game, 50% on chat, kind of paying attention to raids or subs or follows or conversations that are popping up and like, oh, was it something interesting happen? I totally missed it, you know? Yeah, and that's uh, that was that's why I don't play single player games on my channel anymore. Because when I first started, I played The Witcher. Luckily, it was like my eighth playthrough. So I was like, I know what <laughs> happens and all that. But we played Ghost of Tsushima for the first time on stream. And I wish I hadn't, honestly. I loved doing it, but like, I wish I hadn't because like you said, I never know what's going on with a single player game. I'm the type of person, I don't like being quiet on my stream because I feel like I'm coming off as boring. So I'm always trying to talk and be entertaining or like same, commenting yeah. and all of that. So I barely know what's happening in the story. Hell, it's the same with Genshin Impact right now. I don't know what is going on in my story in Genshin. And so that actually kind of sucks. Um, and other streamers can do it better than me. But like, yeah, I, that's why I just don't play single player games because you enjoy them a different way. Like when I play a video game off stream, I'm quiet. I'm vibing to music maybe, or I'm just so engrossed in the game. If I was to stream that way, dude, nobody would watch me, honestly. <laughs> nobody would watch me just sit there being quiet. It's almost like envious of those extremely big twitch streamers like maximilian dude and you know those super yeah. big ones who can play single player games and it's almost like they just turn twitch chat off and they're just kind of like just playing the game and a lot of those people you know who watch are there because he plays the game really good and they just want to see some good gameplay of it maybe he gets early access or something but yeah when you're in that affiliate level or like early partner level you can't really you don't want to turn chat off because like that's that's the whole community that's like everything that built you up that's that's who you're streaming for that's your audience so it's 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 this weird thing where yeah kind of like the bigger you get the more you can kind of i don't want to say break away from chat but it, it's almost like you don't have to be as attentive to it and that could right. be a good thing it could also be a bad thing because you kind of 
lose that connection a little bit you know like it's always interesting seeing some of those really big streamers who they have to have donations pop up to be able to like interact with the streamer you know right but see again those those that one percent of huge streamers made content somewhere else they blew up somewhere else and they brought like one of my one a streamer that i really look up to uh i don't know if you know jenna marbles oh yeah but, yeah uh her boyfriend uh now fiance julian he was a youtuber and he did like a lot of cooking stuff and like things with her in a podcast and that's how he like got internet famous and then he started streaming and now like he is engaging with his like chat but like he streams like five thousand people on average and his chat's blowing up right and he can just like kind of be there hang out play video games play video games with like people in discord and not really pay attention to chat but again he blew up somewhere else for people for 99 percent of people and streamers you can't afford to do that and i think people kind of look it's important to look at big streamers and see what they're doing and like take inspiration from them but not everything like especially right. not the not reading chat because your chat's not blowing up like that like you can't even read tim the Tatman's uh chat dude it's just blowing up left and right he can't he can't read it you, they're there to watch him play and you see those people too who like maybe they only watch xqc or or tim the Tatman or dr disrespect they see these huge call of duty valorant players and they're just all they're doing is playing and then you pop into their chats and they're trying to mimic it they have like similar borders a similar layout um and they like don't really talk to chat and they think because tim the tap man has twenty thousand people watching him and he can ignore chat that they can do it as well but they don't see any of the progress that led up to where he is at that point you know so oh, yeah it, it's almost... i remember watching tim before i'm sorry i cut you off oh no you're good <laughs> i was just gonna say i remember watching tim when he had hair like long hair and he was he was small time he was streaming to only a couple hundred people and i still watch him and now he streams to twenty thousand people and people don't realize where he started uh just using him as an example but he started like a lot of us he engaged with chat he was cringy and you know he talked to people but then he blew up because of fortnite and call of duty and overwatch and stuff like that and now he can afford to not really engage like people always have asked me like what are you gonna do like if you ever like grow to like, like a level like where you can't read chat anymore because i take pride in reading 99 percent of my chat and it's like i don't know it scares me because i love reading chat and i just like engaging with people and talking to people but i don't know like sometimes you just can't afford to do it anymore if you know if your chat literally just going a mile Fine. a minute like you really can at that point uh but i feel like at that point people are there for your status and who you are and like your personality versus you know you engaging they know they know what to expect they don't expect you to engage with them but then at the same time if tim the tap man randomly does call out that one person flying it's gonna make their day they're gonna be like oh my goodness exactly. tim the tap oh, man yeah. read my reply <laughs> yeah exactly people love, that's why people donate too they they don't because they want to hear tim like or nick Merckx or whatever talk to them for like a second right that sounds it's kind of crazy isn't that like psych the psychology of that just so fascinating people will literally give somebody else money yeah. just for them to be like doro 44 thank you for the five dollar donation on continue on with the game like it is so psychologically yeah. you know yeah it's it's really interesting because you never know what that person's kind of going through you know maybe they're very lonely and that recognition literally just made their day like someone recognized their existence in a sense like you never know and it's just kind of like sad in a sense when i think about it um but also it's like for me it's like i mean i idolized him so like it would be sick if he was to say something but like i don't really like care if i go my life without him saying anything to me but yeah the psychology behind this is strange i don't know i think that's something a lot of people in those really big communities kind of miss out on from some of the smaller communities a lot of those people who are there for the communities and the friendship and they want to see ninja or shroud or tim like mention their name if they would just simply go to a smaller community that had 10 people or 20 people watching it could be like a much bigger impact you know and that's why a lot of people like i said earlier uh statistically uh drop out of someone's community once they like hit a certain level 
um or hit partnership i was literally just talking to one of my viewers this morning uh in a voice chat and he brought up that point is like he doesn't really like watching bigger streamers because of that like you, you get less attention and i totally get that um twitch is all about the engagement in my opinion but that's just all like, about the chat baby it's all about the chat <laughs> but you know when people reach a certain level or hit partnership they do have a dip because people just like leave because they, they're not going to get the attention that they think that they're going to get anymore and but then you bounce back obviously but yeah it's just like i don't know it's kind of strange but i get it yeah i've had i've had a, a viewer a few months back that said like they don't watch any partnered streamers and like some of the streamers that they have watched go from kind of zero to partner they've just stopped going into their their chat and like just watching their streams and it's it's that feeling of like i mean if that were to happen to me would you just literally not want to talk to me right. anymore just because i got a check mark next to my name and it's right. again the psychology of it is so fascinating because to them they're just like oh they're big time they don't care about me and to us we're like no you all matter i want to talk to all of you <laughs> right but yeah i i get that you know and so interesting um, so they kind of they kind of have like the feeling of like my job here is done type thing and time to move on to someone else and then just kind of bounce around in a sense it's so fascinating it's so yeah so interesting um so a couple questions i did want to get to um before we kind of wrap up everything sure um what has been your favorite youtube video that you've created to date do you have a particular one uh let me pull up uh my youtube channel real quick and see because i can't really think of any really off the top of my head i really just enjoy all the ones i make i guess but it's not really about the end result for me it's more of my process um my favorite one that i made i also did want to mention too in your youtube videos i absolutely love your first like 30 to 45 second introduction and how you do mention that you stream on twitch um yeah. and like the days you stream and to like come jump in and chat and everything i think that's something a lot of people maybe don't do very often or don't do as well as they could as having those call to action statements and even if it's like one of the videos i was listening to or watching a couple days ago you're talking about how important it is to set up your bot to have timers and have them mention like yeah. sometimes people just forget to follow so just having a, a subtle queue up or a bot to remind them can go a long way so call to actions yeah. are really good yeah and you know it's funny um last few videos i got rid of the call to actions in the beginning because i wanted to experiment a little bit and see if i get rid of the intro will mm. people stick around more because there's like less of like an intro they have to get through and like i just have like instead i have like some sort of like hook while i'm talking in the hook like the subscribe button pops up and then and then i quickly mention hey i also stream on twitch and that's it and then like my pop-up comes up for that let's just get into the video and like honestly the videos didn't do any better really than my normal videos mm. so i was like you know what and so my my last video and then the video that comes out tomorrow um have that call to action again because i just i like it you know it kind of gets everything out of the way and it reminds people and then i i, I have added like in the middle of my videos a, a different type of pop-up for subscribe that will pop up and so if people are watching in the middle of the video and they see that like, oh yeah you know what so far i've liked this video i like this guy i'll subscribe um so i've been doing that as well but my favorite video i've created so far easy um it's a video that came out six months ago and it's at 95 views nobody watched it um the ps5 unboxing oh nice <laughs> my playstation 5 unboxing is a 20 minute video i love that video because it was the ps5 it came out and i was so i was so hyped to make the video and unbox it i actually unboxed it on um on the video for the first time it was my first time holding it and everything so i got a genuine reaction of it and i loved all the b-roll that i did and getting and i liked testing out the playstation for like the research of the video and then talking about it i loved it so that was probably my favorite video that i made but it's didn't really get any views honestly um you're so yeah that's you're surprised by the size like when i got the playstation out of the the box and everything i was like everybody all the early reviews said this thing is huge 
but I had it next yeah. to my PS4, my original PS4, like the launch day PS4, and I'm like, oh my god, this thing is like twice the size. This thing is huge. I had to take a shelf out of my uh, my TV stand to put it in there. <laughs> like I, I literally had to do that. That's how tall it is. Do you set it like vertical or horizontal? It's uh, vertical. Vertical. Yeah. <laughs> I tried doing it horizontal with the little attaching it looks weird it, yeah it, it was terrible i just couldn't do it and yeah it doesn't look it doesn't look natural when it looks like that so i was like uh, uh no no thanks do you have the thing on the bottom to hook and hold it or do you just do it without it no i have the stand on the bottom yeah oh, i don't want you. that thing going anywhere um <laughs> but yeah that was that was my favorite video that i made and then another video that i really liked um was my twitch payout video and just talking about money and you know how much i made my first month and what to expect and just like kind of like how it's not about the money and stuff like that that was more of like a me video and versus like a let me get views video but actually that video got a lot of views so i was People like oh, fascinated okay, cool. with that i feel like some of those taboo subjects I, I don't know why they're taboo but just like society thinks they're taboo like money topics people yeah. are like secretly fascinated with so because yeah i've oh, seen yeah. so many you know people whether it's youtube or twitch just make the like how much money did i make my first month on youtube being partnered or twitch you know and it's it's always so fascinating to see because because you're instinctively subconsciously comparing yourself like oh they made this much how did i make or how much did i make and humans again are very interesting <laughs> they they really are i got a comment actually on that video where it was like so you're saying that you had a uh um a pre-built community and i was like my girlfriend and then two friends are not considered a pre-built community because i i had made like i think my first month like 150 dollars now and i even said in the video too i was like this is not normal for people to make that their first month um so <laughs> in the comments i was like maybe watch the video <laughs> but, but yeah that, that's another video that i really like i like all of my videos that i make as honestly just though the process of putting it all together i actually just switched over to final cut pro on oh, mac it's gonna and, ask about that yeah like so all the videos that you see and even my tiktoks up until tomorrow's video were made in adobe premiere pro and I hate Adobe. Adobe never sponsor me. I hate your software. Um, it's just so bad. And even on my PC. And so I was like, you know what? I have the Mac. I I just got a new MacBook. Let me let me try Ooh. Final Cut. And they had like a 300, 90 day trial. And so I've been using it a little bit, trying to learn it before I actually made a full video using it because I was scared this tomorrow's video is all edited in that and let me tell you my editing was cut in half because of how intuitive final cut is and how easy it is to work with and how fast like scrolling and everything is and then the uh exporting of my video took half the time than it does on my my pc it was just wow. so easy to do I love Final Cut. Like once it, my trial runs out, I'm going to purchase it. it. It was. And it's only one time purchase too. Exactly. And I'm trying to get away from the subscriptions and all of that. And I actually switched from Photoshop to Canva um, because everything I can, I do in like the only thing I use Photoshop for is for my thumbnails mm -hmm. and I can make all my thumbnails in Canva and autumn has a paid subscription to them so i just use that and they even have templates too in canva for like youtube thumbnails so i've been kind of going off of those and like tweaking them and stuff and so yeah like I, i'm trying to get away from adobe and stuff but for any editors out there if you have a mac final cut that's the one to go with that was literally actually my next question i was gonna ask because like you got I, I think i read your specs for your pc it was a 3900x and a 2080 ti but yeah. you're you love Mac OS. D did the MacBook you got is, is it one of the M1 MacBooks? It is. Yeah. Yeah, I got the uh the M1. I got the MacBook Pro, but then I looked at more reviews and people kept telling me, "Dude, you should get the Air instead." And I was like, "No, there's no fans in it." And then I looked at more view uh videos and I canceled my MacBook Pro and I got the Air instead and it runs exactly the same as it would and there's no throttles or anything with it. Wow. And since Final Cut is so built in Mac OS, like there's no throttle for it. And even just web browsing and like I've I'm moving all of my workflow to my MacBook. Um interesting. 
and I the headphones I just bought um are for my content creation. They're the uh the, the Apple AirPod Maxes. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I I got those. They just came in yesterday and I've had them on all day today. I love those. Um they're actually worth the money. But I'm trying to move all over to Mac because I've always I grew up with Mac and then I have iPhones and everything like that and so it's just easier to create on it. It's just it, it's weird but like it's more it's fun it's fun to create on mac versus windows especially when the program works and all that my creative i got into like a more of a flow and i was editing because it's just so easy um even airdrop though, is amazing people that oh have never experienced God. airdrop like you you're you missing don't even out no <laughs> airdrop is literally the best thing in the world especially i can it do is. it from my my macbook to my my phone and back and forth it's just oh my god my next thing i want to get though is a, a 4k camera but that'll come in due time you're using the sony a6000 yes with a sigma lens on it yeah is yours the 16 1.4 it is it is yeah that's the that's, that's my, the butter lens. camera and it's my <laughs> uh my youtube camera dude the yeah i have the a6000 up there and i i was so bummed because i originally wanted to use it but the we got rain and the hdmi port in it so <gasps> oh no it, the hdmi port doesn't work unfortunately it still takes great photos like as a photography camera um sure. but yeah it's kind of a bummer but what camera do you use now uh i'm using our full frame one it's our sony a7r2 and it's okay. it's a great camera i mean we bought it funny story about our my camera is like we bought it like five or six years ago specifically for my wife's business for doing like photography uh -huh. and stuff and then when i wanted to start streaming i kind of started getting the stuff together around early march of last year and i bought mm. a webcam and literally the day the webcam got delivered i watched an alpha gaming video about how you can get a cam link and turn your mirrorless camera and use that as a webcam and i'm like yeah. 75 dollars for a webcam or 120 dollars for a cam link i'm probably right. gonna get the cam link so i returned yeah. the webcam and yeah i mean i like it a lot it's interesting though because it has it's such a high megapixel count camera i think it's like 46 48 uh -huh. megapixels which actually means when the iso gets cranked up it becomes really noisy um yeah because there's so many pixels on that single frame sensor so it's actually not the best video camera to use um like in more low light situations but i love it like we've definitely gotten our money's value out of it that's awesome love it a lot i'm the same way as you like when you meet those people who just get all giddy about hardware stuff and yeah yeah it, it was the same way with uh i'd always wanted to go xlr but i'm sure you remember for like all of 2020 they were literally impossible to find they were just yeah. sold out everywhere and one night it was like end of october I just got up at like two in the morning to like use a restroom or something and just randomly checked Amazon and it was it, it said one left in stock and this was like two in the morning and I'm like oh my god order 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 and yeah that's how it happened with me too actually like I well, I actually didn't really care about getting a go XLR because I had the wavelink uh software with my Elgato uh microphone but I wanted this I wanted the microphone I wanted the yeah. short SM7B it was between this microphone and the electro voice re20 Dude, same <laughs> yeah that, that microphone I you know it's funny though I love the I look love of new, it I love new tech and so a month ago I almost was like trying I was trying to convince autumn for me to get the electro voice so that I can switch between this and that one because I just love the look of that microphone. Yeah. And I was like, we can even start a podcast, you and me, so then we have two microphones. Look, you're like trying to sell it. <laughs> I'm trying to sell it. Um, and it was a no. But um, I mean, they're both great microphones, but I wanted this one. And so then I was like, okay, what can I connect it to? And I was like, oh, yeah, the Go XLR. Yeah, that thing exists, right? And I got lucky. I went on Amazon. There was like a couple left in stock at MSRP. And I was like, okay. And so I got it with this. It was a big purchase, but Autumn really wanted me to do it because she thought the way I there's two ways I um I justify a purchase now for streaming and stuff. It's will it benefit my YouTube content? Yes. Is it a tax write-off? Yes. And then that's how I make the purchase. Smart businessman. I like it. You gotta, you gotta, <laughs> right? <laughs> but it's also at the same time, because, because like we talked about earlier, SM7B 
DSLR camera, it's not going to make people follow or anything. But at the same right. time, if you get enjoyment out of it, if it makes you happy, if, if you're like looking, you know, an OBS and you're like, I got a nice blurry background, got colorful lights. I got yeah. real, everybody's I'm sure you get a lot of people commenting on your audio saying your audio sounds amazing yeah i i do I, they're always like oh like yesterday and yesterday's stream was like who's this guy with the radio voice and i was like trust me it's the microphone <laughs> <laughs> but it's so true every time someone said like that happens in my stream someone will just be like dude your your audio sounds amazing and it's just always like a, a little pat on the back you're like all of yeah. this is kind of some somebody recognizes it um that's a big shout out to anybody listening to literally like the best thing you can do for your favorite streamer is just tell them their stream looks really nice or sounds really nice you do not even realize how much that will that'll make them happy and smile about because oh yeah it's it's audio is one of those things that if nobody really notices it that usually means it's good and it's going in the right direction but right. when you have those like audiophile people and they're like listening with you know headphones in or airpods or whatever and they're like wow it sounds really good because because if you just listen to twitch on your phone you're not gonna really notice the difference but if you have like right. headphones on or airpods in or something then you can really hear the difference between uh -huh. you know an sm7b and and somebody talking in the reverse side of a blue yeti or something <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like like the all the um the gear and stuff like you said it doesn't make the content creator like it doesn't it's it for you, you not for them off. exactly like this it brings me enjoyment having this and using it really makes me happy um and i love it and i love having it um i will say though for youtube content i would i would say i'd argue and say that your gear does matter because would you rather yeah there, there's definitely like it's different because with youtube would you rather watch a high quality highly made video or a really blurry horrible audio type video let's just say hypothetically two creators they're both giving the same great information to you that's so valuable to you but one has just really crappy audio and visuals and the other has really good gear and stuff you're more likely to probably watch the better one so for youtube i would say it definitely does matter you don't have to like go all out but at least take care and look at your gear a little bit more so than with streaming i guess i won't buy the epic red dragon 8k camera i guess you know for thirty thousand oh dollars thirty thousand dollars <laughs> oh, i thought the a7 sick. that was two thousand dollars was a lot of money it's only God. you know who's kind of a weird exception to that rule though is casey neistat Casey Neistat's videos I've are heard of that person. Oh, they, he, they do camera videos, don't they? Yeah, he does a lot of like very intense, fast paced vlog vlog stuff. And he has a really nice camera and audio and everything. Mm -hmm. But a, a similar YouTube with like similar amount of subscribers and views and everything would be like MKBHD. And his oh, videos okay. are just like just perfection. Oh, that's Casey. Yeah, I know that guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then and then Casey's kind of the all around the place vlogging everywhere, kind of going crazy. You hear like street noise in the background and not yeah. a knock against him. Like he makes incredible content. I would definitely recommend you to check him out if you get a chance. He, his he's a very infectious, kind of like Peter McKinnon, you know, just that infectious yeah. personality that you're like they could be talking about whatever and I still want to watch just cuz that personality, you know, and I think that's no. I think that's what a lot of streamers should maybe strive for, you know, so you can experiment and go out into that variety atmosphere and try other games that you're interested in because you want people to be there for you, regardless if you're playing Hades or Dark Souls or Fortnite or whatever. I mean, maybe not Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe Fortnite. Have you played Fortnite actually? Uh, I used to be really into Fortnite, actually, um, and I only want to re-download it now to get the Rick skin from Rick and Morty because I'm a huge Rick and Morty fan. Oh, nice. I just want the skin. I don't. I don't I'll play the game anymore. <laughs> I never got good at the building. You know, I've. I, I promise, I'm not lying. I've never once ever played a single round of Fortnite. But I really? think the concept is really cool. Like this idea of getting a bunch of friends together in like an arena and kind of like a battle to the last one standing i think that whole concept is really cool isn't ape i've never played apex either but isn't apex kind of similar apex is a battle royale so yeah um i think technically first battle royale was h1z1 and then that was built off 
they built off of that to make PUBG, and then PUBG mm. started making it a little bit more famous and then fortnite kind of like mainstreamed it to like little kids uh and then after that battle royale just opened up and so apex is a battle royale but there's no building but you have like different specialists and heroes that like or they're called legends um they all have like special abilities and stuff so what i like about apex is that each fight that you get into is going to be different because you have to like kind of analyze who you're going up against and like their team comp I'm like okay we got a guy who can smoke out places you got a guy who can go really fast and a guy who has a jetpack versus like warzone which i got really into for like months um it's just soldiers shooting each other that's it shoot so there's fast. more skill to apex yeah shoot, who can shoot faster you know yeah when i um got my pc last week the first two games i downloaded were um were apex legends and marbles because i've never played <laughs> either of them and i've always everybody always says like apex legends is really fun so definitely gotta play apex play. sometimes Let's hell go. yeah we gotta play yeah. sometime um so yeah like free to play games are i've always been really hesitant of free to play games because like i know they make yeah. their money elsewhere but apex is definitely one i really 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 want to try um kind of stemming outside of youtube and twitch and everything i did want to ask aside from like all the youtube and stuff what other hobbies do you enjoy that some of us may not know about you doro sure um i did theater for nine years and Ooh, i cool. want yeah and i wanted to be a professional actor and i got accepted into a school in california back when i was graduating high school but my mom kind of stopped me from going so i didn't end up going but i still did theater in college um and then i dropped out of college but so yeah i did theater for a very long time that's a true passion of mine um i did like i did acting and mostly acting but a lot of behind the scenes stuff as well like one of my first jobs was actually building professional stages and sets for productions whoa um yeah so i got some carpentry work and everything and i know i know my way around a hammer but i did that um i've drawn my entire life i'm a i, I know how to draw um i'd say i'm pretty decent at it uh, mostly a comic book and like cartoon styles I posted some in my discord and stuff and like my old instagram account but yeah drawing and then but i haven't drawn in a little bit now because of content creation and just like how much time it all takes so i guess yeah. currently my my uh my hobbies is like i guess if you want to consider editing that's a that's a hobby i guess so i yeah. mean it's a skill in and of itself um yeah do you think doing theater makes you more was kind of a help with being on camera a little bit it is it, i've said it actually in streams before where it really helps and it's kind of like streaming is kind of like an outlet for not doing theater anymore um where now i can kind of put on a performance and be in front of people live and entertain people and make people laugh um in a different kind of form and so yeah most definitely and it definitely makes me more comfortable like being in front of a camera, I know how to look at a camera. I know how to work with a camera. I know how to just talk to people. So, yeah. Do you find with like your YouTube videos, do you, cause I've, I haven't usually been one to stare into the camera until I started podcasting. Do you find yourself just like looking in the center and almost like, I find myself almost zoning out sometimes where I'm like looking at it, but it's almost like, I'm not yeah, really, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes. Yeah. Um, like if i'm making a youtube video and it's just like here then like everything else starts to like kind of like blur out a little bit but what made it really easy because i used to do camera work and stuff and i took a lot of classes on like camera acting and stuff but i look at the camera as like a friend that i'm just talking to and yeah. like it's just like I, I get it it's a camera it doesn't exist but like i kind of just envision this as a friend just talking to it you know just having a conversation with it and then you just come off more naturally with it so definitely a skill you have to learn though and kind of get used to because you kind of feel crazy at first when if you're not used to that kind of stuff oh yeah I, I was feeling like super awkward like one of the podcasts were and i was weird about it because like i was kind of like looking at discord down here at, at the person and then kind of like looking a little bit in between and like 30 minutes into it then i was like just like staring <laughs> at the camera um but yeah it, it's it's definitely been something that's been a, a little bit of a struggle for me to kind of get used to it is like staring at the camera and just 
just going for it you know but at the same time i feel as i'm getting older ju there's just been this idea washing over me of just like it just doesn't matter what other people think you know just it doesn't no it doesn't i feel like as humans we spend so much mental energy just worrying about what other people are gonna think and most people really don't care most people don't even have the mental energy to care about what other people think they're too busy thinking about themselves what other people are gonna think about them and it's yeah. exactly I'm, I'm i'm too worried about my stuff right now i'm not worried about anybody else and people are the same way they're worried about themselves and their lives they don't care what they, you know you might have maybe a couple people but like most time just who cares you know really who cares just do your thing honestly you are your own longest relationship so like take care of yourself and do things for you because if you do things to please other people then you'll never live a fulfilled life because you can't please everybody 100 percent. and even like the way it stems back as we talked earlier about streaming games that you love versus streaming something that you're really not into but maybe it's blowing up and you just want to hop on board the wave um yeah yeah you got to be passionate about it whether it's creating content or work like working professionally or like in a relationship like you just got to be passionate about it and continue right. to work on it and improve it every single day so yeah exactly totally agree enjoy the process it's 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 I totally feel like during this conversation, I already knew like bits and pieces beforehand about you, but I feel like during this entire conversation, it's like I've met a long lost brother, I swear. <laughs> we always say it, it's like we're long lost brothers, dude. <laughs> Pretty much, a thousand percent. Um, so here's one for you. What is one thing that you absolutely love about Twitch? And conversely, what's something that you're critical of when it comes to streaming on Twitch? Ooh, so something I love about Twitch and something that I'm pretty critical about about Twitch. Um, something I love about Twitch is the power to be able to meet new people and connect with new people that you would have never met. If, if it wasn't for Twitch, we would not be talking right now, you and me, because you live in a completely different state, you know, and all of that. And so then it opens up doors to situations like this, where we're sitting here talking and you know getting to know each other more and it's like that that interaction and how it can bring people together something that i'm critical about though with twitch is well there's a couple things i guess but one of them is like how it feels like they don't care about their creators to be honest with you i feel mm. like they don't care and they don't listen they really i i feel like they don't they just don't listen um to their creators at all i mean it took them an extremely long time to even add tags for bisexual and you know all of that and just add tags and, and you know how easy that is to add a tag to a website that people can use i used to do web development i know how easy it is they could have done that in a couple hours in an afternoon they but they chose not to and i and people have been begging for that for years and we had the lgbtqia plus one but also we didn't have an ally one and they don't listen i feel like that's and i it's always cringy and it's always so hard when they like post a new update on twitter and like we're adding this or they, they have a, their town hall meetings oh and yeah and those are train wrecks because they just don't listen to what people want and that can actually help like we're introducing That's new words. hype train emotes and everybody in, in their in their chat is just like you're what that is not yeah. what we want and and then on, going off of that too they add a, a scary spider in, in the midst of like dogs and cats that made no sense to me at all so it's just like they don't listen i think that's the biggest thing i'm critical about is i just feel like they don't listen to their creators and um without going into too much twitch drama but there was a partner that just got their partnership took and took and taken away uh long overdue but they were sending like hate raids and they were a very hateful content mm, creator heard about that uh, yeah yeah and they're finally now revoking their their twitch partnership and it's just like it took you long enough like it's like do you guys live on a different planet and like it just takes a long time for our transmissions to get to you it's how it feels it's like Twitch. snail mail when they don't realize that we're in the age of the internet <laughs> exactly and and also it's like dmca 
Oh, the, yeah. the, one, of, one of the biggest issues that people still deal with to this day uh getting copyright strikes and stuff from old clips and so i actually have to this weekend go through some clips and see if i have to delete anything because i've been seeing new copyright uh waves go out but like youtube took care of that issue years ago twitch was just like nah Th they had that mentality of it'll never happen to us yeah and now it is and now since they're late on it now they're struggling with it and content creators are it's like content creators are getting hit with the first you know the brunt of it uh versus twitch you know it's like oh you know what the smaller content creators will just ban them and all that and, it, th and then it also plays into they don't listen and they that it plays into they don't really care because they'll just ban anybody just to save their own butts because of their mistake yeah dmca was always really interesting for me because i know like youtube went through it as well like a decade ago but they also spent billions of dollars creating an infrastructure that allows for them to have the the systems they have in place when i started streaming a year ago like i just uh, i don't know i just always was like i always i didn't know about dmca but i'm like i feel like playing you know i can't really play led zeppelin or the beatles or kendrick lamar on my stream like i intuitively right. felt like i knew that like that's not my music and if ever right. i'm gonna make money off of this like i can't be playing music that's not mine so i don't know i mean i come from like a pretty musical background so i was kind of aware of copyright and everything like that but right. it, it still blows my mind there's still some of my friends today they're just playing like they have like the pick song requests in the channel point thing and they'll be playing just whatever and i'm like guys do you like not care i mean you're gonna get banned you, like come on you know some people are playing with fire and like i even know a couple partners that still just play whatever music they want i'm like i mean you guys are playing with fire but like i mean you guys do you but it's it's just kind of sad because i feel like there's also no communication because yeah. i just saw a partner who has been streaming for like six years and is a pretty big partner got two copyright strikes in one day from old clips and they don't even tell him what clips they were and anything they just said hey you have two strikes that's it third one you're out right even though you've been with us for six years and all of that and that's that's scary especially for someone at that level where that's their job like truly that's their job and it's like you could it's like you're about to be terminated in a sense it's like what do you do i right. think that's why people are moving over to youtube now in the early stages of youtube because they believe in it and youtube actually i feel like cares about um you know their their creators and wanting them to grow i actually got a um a warning on my channel um about a couple months ago because i had posted a link in my description to a website that i had mentioned to um download um youtube videos or something um, oh and like, so like a youtube video downloader yeah i think that's what it was they um don't and like i don't that. know <laughs> they don't like that they don't they don't really like the use of like external links to like weird websites like that um oh it was the video on how to add like gifs like green screen videos to your oh, yeah. layout um and so i was like you can find those videos on youtube and then just download them but they found the link and then they gave me a warning and they said hey if you do this again we'll have to kind of like suspend you for a couple of weeks you can still post content but like it'll you'll be suspended but it's not mm. like twitch where it's just like hey we're not going to tell you the reason why we're giving you this strike if you get another one you're out type right. thing and it's just like hey at least youtube tells me exactly what i did wrong so i don't make that same mistake again communication i mean not even just in like a professional setting but in like relationships and just life communication is so incredibly powerful and so yeah. important um the same thing happened with amaranth a couple weeks ago where they completely like demonetized her adsense revenue on twitch didn't oh, tell wow. her didn't communicate at all she actually figured out when she went into her analytics and saw that she wasn't getting any ad revenue and i mean obviously ad revenue on twitch isn't a lot of money but when you're you know averaging tens of thousands of viewers per stream right that's hundreds of dollars thousands of dollars that can add up and then she contacted them about it and that's when the whole hot tub stream thing kind of came out and they did the whole category for it but yeah that's that would probably be my biggest gripe with twitch you know through this past year is like their communication skills are just atrociously bad hilariously bad yeah 
Um, yeah. I think we... I had, a, I had a stream where... Sorry, just one last thing. No, you're good. I, I had a stream where these people came in and they were just kind of... We banned them because they were just misbehaving. And so they, I guess, like doxed me where they found all of my information. Like, and I'm talking my address and my mom and my grandma's name and then my phone number so they kept calling me while i was live and texting me threats what? um and like threatening me and my family and like you know if you don't ban us we're going to come to this address and you know do this and this and this and i had all the recordings and they even left me voicemails i was like you guys are idiots holy crap uh, and, th and then they posted all my information in chat but my mods got to it really quickly um and it, it it scared me because i was like like what is happening right now like because people have been swatted before and stuff like that i reached out to twitch i even reached out to the fbi and i i put in like the all of that because i was like that's harassment right um twitch never got back to me they never got back to me they never like even sent me an email saying hey we're looking into this or hey we took care of it it's like they it felt like i put out an email and it just got thrown away you know it was something that serious you know right and that's when i knew twitch doesn't really care dude that is that is just terrifying i don't know if there's yeah. a better word for it than that that's been like one of my biggest fears about streaming live is just the potential of that and yeah you hear horror stories of people just like hold on somebody's at the door and then they open up the door and you like hear in the background like this is the fbi or swat right. or whatever like or you see That's like terrifying. SWAT teams like come in like right. while you're streaming and like put you on the ground and it's like you know it, that stuff is real and it's just like it's scary but like again twitch did you f doesn't care i i, I think their accounts got banned later yeah. on or they might have been deleted i don't know because again there was no communication between me and technically an employer of mine which is twitch i wonder i'm hesitant to ask but like i wonder if they were if you figured out how they were able to get that information if it's it pretty was... easy actually because i figured it out yeah you could just really? google my name yeah if you know my full name then you can just google it and then like there's websites out there that like keep track of people and like if google yourself what? you'll you will be very scared like when you're done with the podcast just go to google google your full name see what information pops up because it's actually really scary there's a few websites i think that you can like try to like have them opt you out but i don't know if they work or not wow but uh, that's why i changed my my instagram name because my instagram name was my full name um because it used to be my personal one so i was like oh great that's how they found it you just gotta google and if you google yeah if, just google yourself you'll be very scared and like kind of freaked out by what you found before i started streaming it was always i'd always kind of thought about that and i always thought of the idea of like the way some like rappers have like stage names or authors have like pen names. So I, I made it a really intense point before I started streaming to have every single possibly thing not have my name on it. And still to this day, nobody except one friend actually knows like what my actual real name is. And yeah. I've had a couple of people ask if I'll ever like fully reveal it, but I, I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, I used to think maybe, but like the more and more I think about it, the more I don't know. And and at this point too, I don't know if I don't know. I don't know if anybody could see me as anything other than Zeph, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, that's, that's just, oh God, that's scary. That's, that, that is like the worst case scenario for, for streaming. That's terrifying. I'm happy. Like nothing too yeah, bad nothing came out of it, but like that just, just again, scary in the moment. that just again goes to show like how much improvement Twitch needs when it comes to communication like yes if you if you are in charge of a website or something that has creators on it literally the number one most important thing probably should be communication and it feels like that's one of the last things that's on twitch's mind sometime exactly so a couple last questions before we wrap up my friend one big sure. one is if you could travel back in time and give your day one streaming self one solid piece of advice what would you tell yourself doro Oh, that's a great question. Um, start YouTube now. Start YouTube now. Like start YouTube day one. Just do it and make, I would say make time to like have different channels to see what works and what doesn't work, you know? 
that's what i would say like experiment with a couple different channels with different niches and if different ideas because now like my schedule is pretty packed where i it'd be very hard for me to create a secondary account and like put out the same type of you know work like if i wanted to go ahead with that video game review like how am i going to do that now it's going to be really hard i would have to make some sacrifices with my current content so I would have said, you know, experiment with different content earlier on before, you know, you're now average 500 to a, a couple of thousand views per video now. And, you know, it's hard. Just, just don't sleep, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Feels that way sometimes. So who is the best Power Ranger and why, Doro? <laughs> you did your research. I love it. I did. Uh, <laughs> Best Ranger. Oh my gosh. Best Ranger overall. Um, my favorite Ranger would probably be Tommy's White Ranger from Mighty Morphin season three, I think. Season three and four, where he he became the White Ranger. That's my favorite one. Um, I grew up with the toy and everything, and he was just I loved him. I still love him to this day. Um, but I'll go more specific, I guess. Like the best, like I'll say best Red Ranger, because I always love this topic, would definitely be it's his name is wes he's from the time force um season he was a time force red ranger best red ranger hands down because he at first was like a rich preppy boy and then as the season goes on he learns responsibility and like you know like what he's supposed to do and like protecting people you know stuff like that he changes into a completely different character by the end of it and i loved it um and like he realized like, oh the money it was it doesn't matter like protecting people and like doing what's right is the best thing so definitely him i love that same exact story arc in video games or books or movies when you have a character who starts over here and they just go through hardships and progress and then they end up a totally different character stuff yeah. like that in movies and video games and stuff just immediately make me click with a the character there like there is nothing more important to me than good character development in any form of media so oh yeah did you play the last of us yes both of them ellie like her her character progression from the first to the last moments of the second one are just like insane like oh my god dude just did you like the second one i (laughs) so okay i was spoiled as a worker i think leaked a bunch of stuff like a week before the game came out and i don't care about leaks But I was like, I'm gonna look at the leaks. Oh and no, I was, why? I was, like, I was like, I'm mad at this. And then I played the game and I was like, the game, I will say this, the game made me mad where they were, then they wanted to make the player mad, obviously, um, with the choices they made. And when I played it, I was like, you know what? This game's like a seven out of 10 because I wasn't, I didn't like the story choices. And this is how you know a game is very impactful where you're Think still about thinking it. about it yeah i'm still thinking about it to this day after i played it at launch and it took me like about four months until i was like you know what that was a nine out of ten game that's not a perfect 10 because i'm still mad but like it's not a sp- it's not supposed to be a happy world and the the gameplay was phenomenal like the animations and gameplay and everything i was like dude so it, it was like a fine wine it took a little bit and I really appreciate the game now. So I, I love the second one, honestly. And I actually kind of want to replay it. Actually, yeah, my wife, like a week ago, was asking, because like I've been playing Dark Souls offline, like in the living room. That's my like offline game. And she's like, mm. I really want you to play The Last of Us again. I'd love to watch that again. I'm like, yeah, yeah that'd be that'd be cool. Honestly, playing The Last of Us Part 2 with headphones on, oh my God, it's such a traumatizing experience a little bit because the sound effects in that game are just beyond comprehensible. Like whenever you pick up like the big pickaxe, you know, and go and like Mm -hmm. hit someone over the head with it. Yeah. Oh, it was terrible. I like hear it in your headphones and I'm like, I just feel bad now. (laughs) (laughs) But like, oh man, the the gameplay was so good. I remember like, like I'm a sucker for like animations and effects. So like, I remember I threw like a glass at somebody's like face and it, he stumbled back and there was like a glass like window behind him and I hit him and he went through the glass and the glass shattered and like that whole scenario I was like dude what did I just watch like that was like so well done 
they did a great job with that game and i and now that there's like a 60 fps um patch for it on ps5 i, I kind of definitely want to replay it um i just don't know if i can go through that story again <laughs> but i feel like like i know what i know I understand why people don't like the story, but at the same time, like you said, I, I feel like it's so commendable and so just artistic and so just, I have to give Naughty Dog props to be able to have the, I don't know, the cojones, if you will, yeah. to be yeah. able to like go and say, this is going to be the story. It's going to be unlikable. People aren't going to like it. Something in the very very beginning of the game is going to happen that's going to piss everybody off and like can yeah. you imagine being the one in charge of the studio going like this is really what you want to sell to everybody this is how you want to do the story but like neil Druckmann just believed it and like you said it, it's those i i feel like i'm sick and tired of every video game and every movie always have a happy ending like there's something so just I like I like dark movies and I like I like when yeah. you get into the head of of the bad guy or like the Joker movie that recently yeah. came out. Oh my god, great right. movie. I just loved it cuz I'm like it, it's it's not anything with action or gore or explosions or whatever. It's just deep methodical. You get into the head of the person and you like you don't agree with what they're doing, but you understand what they're doing, you know? right and like with the last of us without any spoilers but that character um was never a good guy right if you if you look at the actions and especially from the perspective of the other character you know if you know um you would do the same thing if you were in that person's shoes if that happened to you right so like and i feel like people thought you know i was like oh like they got mad i, I did too but then i realized they were never good and that, the, the, that world is not a happy place so it's okay to like have not have a happy ending i do the only th the thing that would make that game a 10 out of 10 for me though is if in the last moments of that game in that fight you had a choice like you were able to make mm. the choice and not have the game make the choice for you That'd that was good. the only thing that would make that game a perfect 10 out of 10 for me but like I'm a huge Naughty Dog fan and the Uncharted series is very yeah. near and dear to my heart. Like I actually, Nate Drake is one of my role models, actually, weirdly enough. Um, I'm glad that that got a happy ending in Uncharted 4. I was like, don't mess with my, don't mess with my Uncharted. Just let that be. And they did. And I was like, okay, thank God. Favorite Uncharted game? Oh, that's, uh, that's so hard because I literally, I replay those all the time. Like I'll just boot up uncharted and just play through the whole series again um uncharted one honestly uh -huh. it's the, my it's my most played one and i love it it's just like for its time it's amazing and like i love the atmosphere of it and i it's my most replayed one or i would say uncharted 4 for the story and the gameplay mechanics but uncharted 4 is less of a game that i can just like boot up and replay because there's so many like gameplay like there's so much like cut scenes and story that you have to kind of get through but Uncharted 1, I can just replay that over and over. I know a lot of people say that Uncharted 2 is their favorite. The train sequence is amazing, yes. but like, but it's not my favorite. I didn't really like Shambhala and I didn't really like all of that stuff. So yeah, I actually like Uncharted 3 more than 2. Very interesting. So would 2 maybe be your least favorite of the series? It is. When I rank them, I always go one four three two wow that <laughs> that might be a, a hot take because yeah I, I always hear yeah. i always hear like two and four seem to be the top ones um yeah usually one's the least favorite and i'm like no for me that's like the origin and like i it's the story is like simple in a sense it's it's just a game that i can boot up and just play and it's just fun I don't know. They did a really good job with it. I got hooked from one right away. Like right when I yeah. first started playing it, I'm like, Ooh, this is so much fun. I I'd probably yeah. say three might be my least favorite, but uncharted mm -hmm. four is just gold. It's, it, oh my God. it might yeah. be, I, I, I used to say it was my favorite PlayStation four game of all time, but then I played bloodborne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like definitely bloodborne is like hands down but i always say bloodborne is my number one game of all time that i've ever played like it's just that good i love everything about it um witcher is obviously another one and then the series wise uncharted that's like 
third place, I guess I would put that categorizes that. So, you know, the only thing I really wish, and I've talked to my chat so much about this. The only thing that keeps Bloodborne from being like a 10 out of 10 for me is growing up from the Uncharted games and Final Fantasy games and God of War. The story is so central front and for like it, that's yeah. the whole game is, you know, Kratos' story or like Cloud's story in Final Fantasy VII and just like that's the core of it. And Bloodborne and Dark Soul games are just not like that at all. They have like this amazing right. story that's almost told in the background and you can either pay attention and get it or you can skip the cutscene and just completely not know anything that's going on. So I yeah. kind of do wish there was a little bit more, like maybe a middle balance of just more cutscenes, more story, more about like Wilhelm and Lawrence and a little bit more backstory on it. And I really wish there was more music. Like every time the music yeah. and the boss scenes are so good, but then there's so many like, you know, th through like the Cathedral Ward or like Central Yarnum, there's just no music. And I'm just like, I just, I wish there was like a Central Yarnum theme or like a, a Witch's Hemwick theme or, you know, like you'd yeah. go there and like the music would change, but that's not really a thing, I guess. And see the, the, the beauty though, for me with the, the Souls games, especially Bloodborne is like, I like story based games Those are probably my favorites, but like those games, you have to like kind of do extra work if you want to know more about the story and the, the lore. Um, so I like read like a, a an ebook that someone had wrote for Bloodborne and it like made everything just make so much sense. Yeah. And I was like, yo, wait, what? And then I watched like Vadi Vidya yes. on like, um, <laughs> he was hyped today on Twitter about Elden Ring. Oh, I bet. Um, <laughs> and all the youtube content is going to pop up now oh my god but i like watching videos like that about lore for characters and stuff like that and learning more about it and then it makes me appreciate the games even more because i'm just like oh wow but i know not everybody's like like that there's like oh just give me the story and yeah. with a lot of games i'm the same way it's just like i want to that's why i like playstation so much i'm a playstation fanboy um there's their games are so cinematic yes. like even ghost of tsushima like it's all just so cinematic and i get an experience and usually like with me and audi when a new game pops like comes up for that's a playstation exclusive we get so excited because it's like cool we get to experience this together and uh, like xbox i love xbox but i've never really gotten that same thing other than gears of war came close that was it but sony just knocks it out of the park and i'm so excited to play ratchet tomorrow because like the gameplay like and all of that it's just it'll be another playstation experience that i get to have i'm super excited for you man the everything you said is so right like playstation just knows they know where to invest their money wisely and they know what their yeah. core base really loves and they love those cinematic story character focused epic just story games you know like it's funny hearing some people say nobody buys single player games anymore and i'm like <laughs> just look at like the top 10 best selling games on the ps4 and and grand theft auto 5 there you go <laughs> right it's, that's more, for the multiplayer it was like the number one selling game so it's like yeah exactly so many good ones um so last two questions for you door before we wrap up this epic conversation one of my absolute favorite questions to ask in your own words, what does streaming mean to you, Doro? Streaming to me means using your platform for bigger and better things. That's what it means to me. That's always been my mission. When I first started streaming, it's my mission today to do, to have the opportunity to just do bigger and better things, something bigger than yourself. I love that. I think, I love that. I don't have anything to add. That was perfect. <laughs> no, I think that's so true. You know, uh, some people use it for playing games. Some people use it for trying to build a career out of it. But yeah, if you can use the platform to just help make the world a better place, whether that's through charity streams or building great communities, building friendships, yeah. there's so much positive that can be that can come out of it. Um, yeah, like I, my, one of my goals this year, I, I keep a journal for like my goals and everything, my dailies and my weeklies. Like I, I plan out my, I pretty much plan out my life right now. So that's what I do. And one of my goals for this year is to like raise over 5,000 for charity and spread more awareness. And, you know, my goal is to like have a 12 hour charity stream every other month and raise charity for different like causes. Cause it's just like, you know, I have that opportunity, like, and it's so easy to set up, you know, like 
why not do it you know and it can really change lives something that's so simple for us to just have it be a charity stream click the charity link and then just kind of do our thing it can just that money goes to such important places that can truly transform lives exactly like we just did saint jude play live and like you know all that money goes toward kids dealing with cancer and it's horrible but that money actually helps them so like it's i don't think people like really kind of sit down and like realize you know what we're actually doing like we raised over 1800 for trevor project like we could have we might have saved a life you know because yeah. with what they deal with like you don't know that but it's going to a great cause dude a thousand percent that's a thousand percent a thousand percent i agree last question for you my friend where can all of our viewers and listeners connect with you online doro got you <laughs> um if you want to watch me on twitch it's twitch.tv slash doro 44 uh, if you like community-based and chat focused streamers with genshin impact and community games that's the place to be if you want streamer help and tips and some tech reviews popped in here and there uh youtube slash doro 44 that's where you'll find me and then on twitter where it's doro 44 twitch where you can see me you know post motivational things funny things and you know just keep up with me so and all of the links for all of that is going to be down in the description below so absolutely check there and that'll link you to all of the social media places that doro just mentioned Thank you all so much for watching and listening to this week's episode of the Zephcast. If you have not done so already, please be sure to smash that beautiful like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really does help the channel out a lot. And if you want to see more of your favorite content creators, streamers, and podcasters in the near future, consider subscribing. It is absolutely free to do so, and we'll be having even more content coming up soon. Thank you again, everybody, for watching. Zephyr's XP. Door 44, and I'll catch you all in the next ones, my friends. Much love, everybody.